tab over here and we're gonna get started when at last we left our heroes they were venturing up the jungle river as they are wont to do in order to get to many points in the the chilton jungle uh but they found <coughs> excuse me trouble along the way as they continue to do um oh god frig but most recently they found a campsite a campsite with a smoldering fire and a pristine relatively pristine two-person tent as they floated up the river uh, but it was in imminent danger of being accosted by a tank puppy and a thunder lizard or is, as they're more colloquially referred a triceratops and a tyrannosaurus rex they were fighting on the bank the party opted to intervene and with the help of z's demonic artifacts managed to um subdue and ultimately destroy the tyrannosaurus without any major damage to the party uh the doctor quickly uh fixed uh that damage pulling their their canoes ashore the guides opted to uh wrest the rex from the river and utilize its corpse as you don't let a thunder lizard go to waste if at all possible while the party decided to investigate the campsite uh, they found no one and no signs of immediate slaughter but what they did find was a bedroll a lantern some mosquito netting a blanket a nice pillow a tent and a backpack full of medical supplies including healing potions and the types of healers kits that the, that the doctor uses to heal the party in searching that medical kit brick found that the uh the patch on the bag was the same as the symbol of the order that dr lorelei is supposedly from and that was the last shot of our previous episode we come back in to that same moment in time a reminder to you the sun has set over the jungle and night has fallen around you you need to find a place to camp and you are a bit battle weary from your day of travel including some river trolls and the aforementioned thunder lizard but the first shot of the episode is once more brick in the tent kneeling over the pack and realizing its contents so adventurers what would you like to do and so yeah seeing the insignia he'd immediately like poke his head out of the tent and go doctor you're going to want to take a look at this. Yeah, the doctor's going to look a little confused, but she's going to go over, kind of take a look over Brick's shoulder. So, so what do you notice first? The high amount of medical supplies or the patch on the bag? Probably the patch on the bag. Okay. Um, for your reference, there are four full healer kits in this bag. I think she's more just shocked, like, she'll take note of the kits, but, like, she's still just shocked that that's the symbol of the Brotherhood of the Fountain of Life. Why is that out here? I wish I had an answer. The doctor's gonna, like, try and get inside and take a look around, see if she can find anything that, like, yeah. has a name on it. Yeah. Um, well, I, yeah, I have Brooke, just. Oh, sorry. Brick would, Brick would let her pass. Yeah. Okay. There's enough room for both of you to exist comfortably in this tent. Um, it's a two person tent. It's designed for either one person to have a sleep area and a work area or for two people to have a sleep area. Um, so you guys can easily move around, both of you inside this tent. Not a big deal at all. But there's nothing in here except what I've described. There's not a canteen. There's not extra food. There's not a change of clothes. There's a cot with a bedroll, a blanket, a pillow, some mosquito netting, a lantern with oil in it, and this bag. And that's it. Then I think the doctor is going to probably look over the bag like, does that have a name on it? Because you cannot tell me Dr. Lorelai had, does not have her name somewhere on all of her things. Sure, I won't dispute that, but no, there is no name here. There is, again, the symbol of the order, but that's it. I think she, like, winces a bit, like, I didn't know we were sending people out to Chult already. 
Why would we do... Mm -hmm. Would it be a history role to see if the doctor could remember if she ever even heard mention of the Brotherhood taking a look at Chult? Uh, normally it would be, but for the sake of the story that I'm weaving for this scene, you have not. Got it. But yeah, I think the doctor is just like... This is... something. And I think she's gonna like exit the tent and take another look around like is there anything that indicates someone has been here recently yeah the fire glowing sorry you're good <sighs> like the doctor looks confused and a little distressed like either a someone is out here and she doesn't know where they are or b a member of the order has just died the fire hasn't been tended in about a day but it still got embers in it. So somebody was so here was like a... within the last cycle, yeah. This was a big ass fire then. I mean, look at the look at the circle on the map. It's like a it's like a five foot radius or not radius, but a five foot diameter like oval of stones with wood piled in it. Like if they built it like log cabin style, they could have made a sizable fire and just left it. Fair enough. I, I apologize the doctor, for like, the uh, for the for the munching, but I'm finishing my lunch. You're all good. I think the doctor like puts a hand to her face and like kind of her fins are like twitching. Like she's debating with herself, because on one hand she doesn't want to steal from another medic. On the other hand, she's kind of starting to get the memo that if you're out in the jungle, you don't survive for very long. Much less without medical supplies. So, Z, are you away from the group? He's... Well... No, I just haven't moved him over. Because he was over there just chilling for the doctor, but... You see Shago and Azaka, like, hauling this like literally huge category lizard out of the out of the river and start like discuss you speak Cholton, I'm pretty sure, yeah? Uh I don't know because I, I didn't have the, the that's language. Right, that's right, that's right. Um so yeah, Azaka and Shago are like discussing quietly like they're letting you guys explore the camp, but they're like obviously having a discussion about this thing. They keep gesturing at it. Uh, when you when you come by, I'm sorry to intrude, but is there a uh, a matter of debate regarding the corpse? Shago chuckles and, and turns away. He says, "Nothing so potent, Toto. It's simply this is a bounty from the jungle, the likes of which neither of us could hope to gain under normal circumstances." We're discussing how we should um, advocate for its uh, dismemberment to the group. You're discussing how to suggest we take what we need from it? And Shago nods, and Azaka says, More than us, everyone. I'm suggesting to Shago that one of us takes it back to the port, and the other one waits here and makes a camp. I dare say that's a fine idea. And I am explaining to Azaka that we were contracted to move further in. So we're debating how precisely to get, well, if you will forgive me, Turtle, the Outlanders, to stay here for a time. We are agreed that this is too good to simply let rot into the jungle. To say nothing of the fact that if we do that, it might rise again. Of course, yes. Um, why don't you two continue taking it apart? 
take it apart and I'll discuss with the others and see if I can't convince them. Very well. And yeah, she like turns and like pulls out a knife and starts just, yeah hacking at the thing. Mostly like she's not trying to cut into it yet. She's mostly like removing the like long feathered quills from it. Cause right. you know, I I personally and it, this obviously extends to my jamming. I don't much care for the Jurassic Park style of dinosaurs. They're not particularly interesting looking to me. They look too fleshy. Yeah, but the I don't want to say feathered. Like, w w when, when somebody says a feathered dinosaur, a lot of people think chicken. And that's not at all what I'm referring to. These things have quills. They're not sharp, per se. But imagine a porcupine quill made of fur or right. feather. This thing yeah. is covered in those, which could probably be used for things. And so Azaka's like using a small knife because that's all she's got at the moment to like trim those off. As you head over to the group. Right. Takes a, it comes waddling over. Any I'm interesting, like, sorry. Any interesting finds? The Brotherhood of the Fountain of Life has been here. There's a bag inside with medical supplies in the pin, but I've never heard of us even discussing going to Chult. How did you know that they came here with the Brotherhood's knowledge? I wouldn't. I don't. I it, don't know why this is out here. Is it possible that they are merely here on their own whims? It's possible, but why take Brotherhood supplies? I think at that point, sir, this just kind of does like a cocked really look at cocked I, just like really. I, I gotta ask, am I the only one that Sir Death disappeared for? I still see my uh, token. No, Sir Death is Sir on my screen. Still there. I don't see her. Oh no. Weird. Like the token or like at the bottom? Also, make sure you guys are rolling as your character. The token. No, it's there for me. In fact, I have it it's selected currently. Weird. Yeah. Uh, here, let me uh, fix it. Uh, yes. Cool. Ah. Sounds like roll 20. He's just being weird. Hmm. How much oil is in the lantern? Um, the lantern, it, it's not. There is a mechanism for this, Kitsune. Use it. Do, 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 boop. Um, about half. It's about halfway full, and it's been, it like, it's on when you find it. Well, yeah, if he'd, uh, turn the the tent little handle turn it off and take it with could be useful totally uh, I believe a, a normal lantern holds a pint of oil so this would have like a half a pint in it that might be wrong I don't remember but whatever mm -hmm. it says it holds when it's full it has about half a little bit more yeah. it I looks like either whoever was here is was either they either ran or they were attacked there are too many things just left running the lantern was on that Agreed. fire has been burning for a while it's prop if it was properly set up that fire could have gone for a while uh, and they left their medical equipment any brotherhood member knows you don't leave without it unless you absolutely have to can't oh no one cannot say either that they have been taken by she like looks looks back at the guides before saying it the demons because they surely would not pass up such easily Lean forward Gamzee you're I... muting yourself oh, sorry. Uh, Kit I'm just trying to remember because I think this was mentioned last week but I'm just trying to remember 
Like, at the very least, there is blood on the ground, but it's impossible to tell if it's just the dinosaur's blood or something no. else's blood. No, I specifically oh. said there was not. Oh, there is no blood. No, okay. yeah, the, well, the only blood you saw was, like, you saw it come out of the tracks. Okay. And, like, there's no obvious signs of a struggle beyond, like, the dinosaurs. I mean, no, there there is a there is a ridiculously large sign of a struggle. It would have obliterated everything else. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Okay. Yeah, no, to, to be clear, this, this area, like, the tent is pristine. The fire pit is pristine. The area around it, it's not, there's mysteriously no print. It's a trike and a trex were fighting on top of it. Right, okay. I feel bad taking supplies, but we if were you... going to set up camp for the night anyways. Maybe we should just set up here, since it's already all here? It sounds Sorry. like a plan. Tactic. My thought, Doctor, we hold on to them for now. If we need them, we use them. If we run into their owners, we return them. We might want to be Fair careful, enough. though. Or if an unknown force took care of whoever was here first, they may still be watching the camp. It's actually quite a uh, convenient thing you've come to this decision. The uh, oh. Our illustrious guides are discussing sending one of them back with some supplies off of the Tyrannosaurus. Were we ever told about the things that the jungle had bounties for? Or were we never told about the bounties? Um, I apologize. I didn't mean bounties in that way. I meant a windfall. Just what? something really good, basically. Th yeah, when, is... when, when, when Shago said a bounty, he didn't mean wanted Tyrannosaurus. He meant prize. It's like us okay, suddenly finding like, a bunch of like raw gold ore or something. Yes, exactly. It, it's okay, like, shit, it. son, we're gonna I, eat for a month. I got it. There probably is a bounty for a Trex, but it's probably for a specific Trex. Named boss. All right. I think... I apologize for the, the confusion. The doctor looks a little concerned about that. No, you're good. The doctor looks a little concerned. Hmm. She does not oh. like the idea of sending someone off. Of course, they won't take all of it with them, I assume. M more than what we'll keep, but... I'm not sure how they'd even be able to get all of it back in the first place, Turtle. Probably another boat. So... They want us to stay put for a while. Right. My main hesitation is we do not know whether or not an outside force caused whoever was here to leave. The dinosaurs well, saw fit to destroy I mean, the outside force very that. well might be the fucking Trex. Well, true, but that's what my character is saying, is the problem is we don't know is the Fair. main issue. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like, if you want to talk about I, an, I, I an, an outside force forcing evacuation... A giant, angry thunder lizard is probably pretty high on that list. True, and I agree with that. It's just, my character is pointing out, it's just like, we don't know that for sure. Absolutely. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, don't miss the forest for the trees. Sure. So, we take a look around, secure the perimeter. Agreed. Right. Um, and this time we keep a better watch on, we keep a better watch. If it, is of, if it is of no argument, I'll uh, recall Nibbles in an attempt to get us an aerial view. That'd be appreciated. He's gonna... Just to remind... Did anybody... I'm trying to remember. You guys rolled con saves last session to stay up for a while. Did anybody fail yeah. that? Did I mention... Az Azaka. Azaka failed. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, she's sleepy cat now. 
So yeah, so so you start casting your spell Z, and ab about this point, Shago walks over, and he like, I think the first thing he does is he like puts his arms around the doctor, like one arm around the doctor's shoulders. Um, that is of course unless you like stop him. No, she won't. She's kind of like just staring at the patch, and then she kind of goes, huh? Did you find something interesting? The Brotherhood's been out here, or at least one of our members have been, and she shows him the bag. Well, that's good, yes? Well, unless they're dead, that could be a problem. If and they I are dead, do you really... have their supplies, Doctor, and do you do wonderful things with them? It's just... They're either I dead didn't... or they fled without the supplies. It's also... I didn't even know the Brotherhood was sending people out here. It is possible that they weren't. I don't know, but... Z mentioned that you and Azaka were talking about one of you going back to port with parts of the T-Rex and us staying here for a bit. If that is agreeable, yes. We can fortify this area pretty easily. Keep the canoes where they need be. I will stay to protect you, of course. And Azaka can take the more perishable reagents back to town. There's nothing in the jungle that can hurt her. We all know this by now. Question. Can we tell if Azaka is exhausted? Um, she's not with the group currently. She's, like, standing in the dark over by the Thunder Lizard. In fact, she's probably okay, still so working on the Thunder Lizard, so... I would say, like, yes, you have dark vision and fair dues, but I don't think you could tell from this angle. Yeah, that, that's fair. That's just, that's why I'm asking. But either way, she's going to sleep tonight, so it'll be fine. Oh, that works. Mm -hmm. Then I just... My character was going to comment on it if my character could notice it first. I'm not trying to say that we should all turn back. In fact, far from it, we need the space in the canoes. But I understand if you want to press forward. It simply... Well, frankly, a thunder lizard like this, and for the record, Sergeant, you will get full credit for the kill. But this can feed an entire district of the city. The hides could make an entire suit of armor, and then some. The bones... incredibly useful building materials. Don't kill these often. It would be a shame for it to go to waste. Agreed. The doctor nods. I wouldn't mind we'll waiting. We'll have to thank the other one for doing area. most of the work. <laughs> but what yeah, that does yes. mean, however, is that we're going to be stuck here for a few uh. days. I mean, if we have to leave on foot, so be it. But ultimately, this would be our home mm -hmm. for until Azaka gets back. Nods. Might be worth taking a look around, anyways. The good news is it's not. Find what happened to the people here. The good news is it's not ghoul territory per se. That's not to say they won't show up, but they tend to avoid this area. Granted, I don't know why. There's plenty of other dangers in the jungle, but we could do a lot worse in terms of finding a cache like this. Nods. I, I have a question for yes. you. What is it? Have you contacted the Brotherhood at all to potentially expand down here? I was working on a letter before we left, but I never got a chance to send it. I'm... Whoa, whoa, I actually, whoa, whoa, I mean, whoa, 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 whoa. Didn't you give that to Madam Red? No, I didn't have a chance to. I'm pretty sure you gave that to Madam Red. I thought yeah. I did as well. Right. No, I'm right. No, you're right. I'm stupid. Sorry. You're not stupid. There's just a lot happening in this story. Hey. Is I, it possible, uh, Doctor, that the Brotherhood did I, start to expand, but someone decided that the supplies would do them better than the Brotherhood itself? I now, now that it. that is extremely unlikely, I will say. Like, yeah, you gave that information to Madame Red, but that was like four days ago. Uh, you guys teleported, well, everybody but 
Cyrodeath. Um, Cyrodeath teleported to yeah. Cholt. That was instant. Cyrodeath, you were on a boat for months. Ah, okay. I you are a long it. way from the mainland. Fair enough. I doubt it. Also, it it's only been a few days. The Brotherhood doesn't do things like that. We organize, we send out en masse to where we're needed. And if we view a necessary to set up, we set up. Also, they're but ahead of you. there's communication. They're also ahead of me. I'm as... as no, I mean along the I river. I was aware. I mean yeah, along the river. Like, this camp all... is in the direction you were going. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. This is also here before we even got out here. They must have been traveling for a few days. I don't think okay. we're going to find anything tonight, Doctor. Understandable. It's late, as is. Hmm. Look. We'll search the area in the morning, Try not to disturb the campsite any more than we already have. We'll see if we can pick up their trail. If there is one. If we are staying here for a few days, I can show you how to make a few things, Sergeant, that might be of use to you. Go on. If there's nothing for it tonight. We'll get some sleep, carve up the beast, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Very well. And at that, Brick would go ahead and leave the tent and start setting up outside. I, I don't mean to assume turtle or knight. I'm not entirely sure what to call you. Do either of you have a means to um, preserve the dead? Not yet. Where I come from, we mainly burn the dead. It is no matter, it simply means we have less time to work with the more perishable aspects of the corpse. I had to ask. I, I'm, on, I'm on unsure of uh, how we may obtain it out here, but um, I do believe salt can act as a good preservative. Salt does not work for the more internal structures of, well, meat-based monsters, turtle. It is a good I thought, suppose. and I'm grateful for it, but you do not sort a heart. It rots either way. I see. And that's actually true. Out of character. You have to With use, like, awful immediately. Like sorry, go ahead. Say that again, Sips. I'm sorry, I talked over you. You're good. Would the doctor know anything about that, or no? Yeah, you know that, like, you, like, you have to use internal organs because you can't really preserve them without magic. And I don't know how to do magic that could do that. So, I think the doctor, like, shakes her head. At this point, we need magic to do it. Just to or be, just to be that. clear, mechanically, none of you have spare the dying, general repose, preserve corpse, nothing like that? Don't fit well. Is the preserve corpse thing? Yes. Cause, what the because fuck? resurrection spells require the corpse to be intact. Fair Te enough. I did not know Technically, the bishop could know one of those. Oh, that's right. The bishop. Um, is, is, yeah. is, is, um, is General Repose a cantrip? Yeah. Uh, have we established what the bishop's cantrips are? I have a couple put down. I think I still had one slot available. Okay, perfect. General Let, yeah, let's give the bishop, let's give the bishop General Repose. General Repose is a second level ne necromancy ritual from it's what I can second find. level? I thought it was a cantrip. From what I can see, it's second level, but oh, I'm not no, sure. The, the cantrip is the cantrip is uh, spare the dying. Ah, well, he's already dead. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, Z, what? like, like you, you could say like I can help you tomorrow. I, with great apprehension, I 
dare say I can arrange something if you think they can last till tomorrow. Uh, um, tomorrow morning? Yes. We'll keep it in the river to keep it cool. It should be all right, yes. Right then. Oh, I can help with that. Or at least somewhat, I can try. I can help with that as well. And please, if we must wait for tomorrow for magic and you can keep the beast cool or even cold, that would go a long way. My kind can breathe ice for a short period of time. Ah, that would damage the hide, wouldn't it? I can use shape water and freeze water for a little bit. That would work. Uh, you could actually, yeah, you could actually, like, ice age this thing. Uh, it would take you about an hour, probably, but you could, like, encase this thing in ice. Now, granted, it would be sitting in moving water, which is scientifically the fastest way to melt ice. And but... the water melts after an hour. What? The water melts after an hour. The spell says the water unfreezes after an hour. Okay. Um. But you could you could do it multiple times. Like, and what I mean by yeah. that is, like, if you guys set a watch, which I'm assuming you're going to do, during your watch, you could keep it frozen, and that's going to be three hours right there. It's probably only six hours until uh, until the bishop gets its spells back, so realistically, you could you could have this thing frozen for four of those six hours. Okay, got it. That works, then. Yeah. Which is not great, think... but it's probably enough to keep the organs secure. Yeah. I honestly imagine that, like, Cyrodeath says, I can freeze my type what she says, and all I can imagine is, like, the doctor just kind of twiddles her fingers and snowflakes come from them. Y'all. Yeah. That will certainly save Azaka a great deal of worry if you think you're up for it. I can do it. I'll just need to take a shift to watch. Are you sure you won't be distracted during it? Ouch. Be done. A job needs to be done, and I can do that job. To be fair, it's like, considering a super point, the doctor is very focused, which is good, but... She doesn't know if the doctor can do, like, multitasking well, is the question. Oh, I thought that was a Bapit brick. Yeah, same. I mean, it could be that as well. <laughs> so, at any rate, you guys make camp, set your watches. I'm not gonna have you guys get attacked in the night because most of you need to rest. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Thank you a you gimme. Do. Uh, we also need to level up. Or at least me and the turtle do. Oh! I, I'm not leveling. Oh. You're not? Well, I need to level up well, at least. Well, you, you definitely rested overnight, so you can you have a, the benefit of a long rest. You get your spell slots back, you get your health back, etc., etc. And yeah, if you need to level up, feel free to do so. Oh. Um, so, yeah, yeah. What's up? I, I, gotta, I gotta ask, there was two things I wanted to do real quick. Yeah, sure, whatever. Um... I wanted to, I think it was looking over Brick's gun, now that we had the, the break. If you think it'd be better to do that in the morning, well, that's fine. That's actually but... something to do in the morning, yeah. Okay. I but... don't I don't want to get too involved tonight because you guys are already pushing into long rest time. Right. I do get nibbles back before we rest, though, yeah? Oh, uh, yeah, you said you were doing that, so yeah, that's not a problem at all. Okay, cool. Uh, okay. You said to use the character master for the level up, correct? No, I did not say that. I've mm -mm, never said you should, that. Mm -mm, you should avoid character master. Avoid that nonsense. Yeah, if if you need help leveling up, uh, Gamzee, would you mind to help him in, in DMs? Yeah, I can do that if you I need it. Cool. Sorry. No, go ahead. What's up? The doctor is, however, for now, going to take some of the healer's kits and the potions. Okay. You've got two regular healing potions and four full healer's kits at your disposal. All right, I'll be adding those. Uh, so I have a question. I have two questions. The first question is, who is on watch when? And the second question is, is the doctor sleeping with Shago? The 
Uh... Um, I think either the doctor is going to... The doctor probably takes, like, the later watch, like, so she can freeze it over and keep it as preserved as best she can. Like, probably the middle watch, then. Well, no, think, like... None of, like, basically none of you are going to have last watch where you did then get up and travel like whoever is on last watch is going to be sleeping later than the others because you're all tired got it like you you're gonna like like the person on last watch is gonna be like okay everybody get up and then they're gonna lay down for like three hours all right uh, um yeah go ahead vader uh i'm thinking Brick's going to take a watch, for sure. Also, out of character, I can only carry, um, out of the extra four healers kit, I can only carry two more, so the doctor's going to put the other two in the, um, uh, haversack. Okay. So, yeah, it is the doctor sleeping with Shago, first question, and the second question, who's on watch when? I'll take a watch. Azaka is yeah. not taking a watch unless someone demands that she does because she's got exhaustion. No, she's nah. she, that, that bitch gonna sleep. The doctor is not gonna let Azaka take a watch. I will say, if if the doctor is sleeping with Shago, Shago will take the doctor's watch with her. That's the main reason that I'm asking. That'd be a good idea if you ask me. Yeah. Again, it doesn't really matter who is who is on watch when, because I've already said definitively that you're not going to get attacked tonight, because you all need to rest. But it is in a good habit for you guys to be thinking about who's watching when. Yeah. Brick will take first watch. So Brick, then the Doctor then, or the Doctor and Shago, then Z, and then Cyrodeath will be last? Yeah. I think so, so Cyrodeath, you'll be sleeping through the, the morning then, which is fine. Like, yeah. not a big deal. Uh, so I think, I think when, when we, when we fade back in on everybody, um, it's like, yeah, it's like 10, 11 a.m. Everybody's up, the, the fire is crackling, um, you know, uh, the, the Choltons are busily deconstructing the, the, uh, T-Rex, of which uh, some of the meat is already on the fire cooking for breakfast. And yeah, you guys have some time whenever you want to do something to just do whatever here at camp. Um, if you want to like fortify this area a little bit, that's a bit much. Uh, if you want to fortify this area, this area a little bit to like, you know, make a make a little base, you can. Uh, if you want to help. Uh, the Choltons with, uh, with, like, you know, getting rid of the Treks, you can. Uh, Z, I'm assuming when we fade back in, you've already cast on a repose on the creature through the bishop. Now, that being said, what happens if you part out the corpse that you cast out a repose on? Does it specifically say one way or the other? Uh, I... I'll do this. I don't you know. touch a corpse or other remains for the duration the target is protected from decay and can't become undead. The spell also effectively extends the time limit on raising the target from the dead, since days spent under the influence of the spell don't count against the time limit spells such as raise dead. Okay, so it doesn't say that you can't, you know, deconstruct it. Hey, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna say that that's gonna be yeah that's gonna be a, a decent preservative, and then if Azaka hurries back to town, you're probably not gonna lose anything. So you're good. Why do I have a feeling that it would probably be a good idea for the doctor to help with the basically dismantling of this thing? Because she's um, used to I would actually argue against, against it because it's basically a big chicken and you're not a cook. Fair enough. That being said, um, if you if anybody does want to help the Choltons, uh, you can or you can like spend the morning amongst yourselves, uh, and there will just be like a backdrop of like Cholton work songs because na- like. If if any culture in Faerun sings while they work, it's one hundred percent a Cholton, right? Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Wow. 
Oof. Oh yeah, that reminds me I need to roll a hit die. Well, good news for you, Fox. That means my chains only get one charge for the day. It's not good news for me at all, actually, because you're going to be here for a couple days, friend. Oh, yeah. Out of character question, who's keeping track of the haversack again? Uh, it's you. Or, wait, I thought I had it still. Well, whoever has it is keeping track of it. I have it on my character sheet. Uh... uh because do we, I know do we, do we like, want to make it communal? I can give you guys a handout that's just the haversack, if you like. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah I think that's a good idea. Because okay. I know I have, like, canvas and something yeah, else in yeah, there. Yeah, give, give me a second. It. it won't take me any time at all, and I can I can get that for you. Here we go. Do 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 I just realize? Wakonga's handy haversack. Ha. In everyone's journal. Oh, can so be close. edited by everyone. There you go, friends. That reminds me. Yo, I'll put it. In, I'll put it Did in the player it, notes section. I had. There you go. I'm. I think I'm, I must be tired or something because I immediately forgot about and then remembered the gun idea. <laughs> So, hmm. so yeah, so, like, what, what scene do you guys want to have in the morning? It can be with the Chultons, it can be amongst yourselves. Like, you guys tell me, what do you want to do? Uh, do feats go into features and traits, by the way? Yes. Yes. You're taking a feat? What are you taking? Shield Master. Nice. I am going to be bashing people. I think the doctor is, like, checking items in the haversack. Like, she goes... Oh, I desperately hope that my alchemy kit didn't get smashed, because she can use that. You have a full alchemy lab in your haversack? That's a lot of stuff. Like, we talked about the fact she had an alchemy kit, like, for the basics of creating... Aye, yeah, 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 you just have to set it up. I know we talked about I'm just saying that's a lot of stuff. I was given one, so she took it with her. What would I need to set up, like, a stone forge? Um, you would need a means to make, like, insulation, so probably bricks, and then a this fire. Is the you you so know absolutely. Clay. No, you could do it with mud. No. Nah. Uh-huh. What were you going to say? Nah, I'm waiting to know what scene you guys want to do. I thought Hockey was saying something. Oh, I was commenting out loud. Gamsey told me about the, and now I'm looking at it. Um, Make sure you raise your maximum HP as well, Hockey. Uh, Zero Death's token is not accurately updating. That's why I'm bringing it up. Oh, thanks. I, Forgot about I think, that. I think if we're going to think, I think the doctor kind of like is thinking about it, and then she looks to the party. Should I set up like a medicine tent, or do you think we should just use this one? This one seems fine enough. I have my own tent. If you, if we ever don't want to sleep outside, we always have my other tent we could set up. And if we're going to be here for a while, who knows? Oh, for the record, I, because it needs to be said, um, the supplies in the canoe have been moved to the shore. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. We could also just have an all-around supplies tent if we wanted. That's... Wouldn't it be easier to just put a tarp over it? Yeah. Perhaps. Perhaps, but we might want to make sure there's something, a tarp under it as well, so that way in case the river floods, the supplies don't get ruined as easily. Mm, agreed. Good idea. See, so, yeah, I think Brick would, like, I'm sure we have, like, tarping somewhere. The doctor has oh, like certainly. a bunch of cam- um, You have tarp for a, for a rain catcher. You have tarp to protect the like crates of supplies. Like, yeah, it, you had two Chultin guides get supplies for you. You have tarp. That's not an issue. Yeah. So yeah, I think 
Brick would go about, like, sorting out the supplies and getting them onto a tarp. What you don't have is a tent, like a big tent. Um, but you have this little tent, so that's something. And if one of Do the... Re go ahead. The doctor has a tent. Okay. Like a two-person tent. She mentioned that. That's okay. what I was well, asking. Okay, th well, this is a two-person tent. So you have technically four people's worth of tent, which is not terrible. The children's are used to that's sleeping outside, so they didn't really bother. That's fair. And the doctor isn't too picky herself, so... So, what are you guys, like, what are you doing? Like, you move yourself under the, under the tarp, cool, but I mean, like, what's the scene you guys want to do? Uh... Um... If no one stops her, I think regardless, the doctor's gonna pull out her tent, cause, like, we're probably gonna need it eventually. Right. So, I I, I think I, I Z can, is. Go ahead. I can imagine as the bricks sorting through the supplies, he finds the now unpowered alchemy jug. Uh, Aww. yes, probably. I will say this, most of the supplies are foodstuffs and fresh water. Uh huh. Like, there's, and, and bug repellent. There's not a lot of, like, specific supplies, because you guys didn't ask for much. Right. Yeah. But you've got bug repellent to last you another probably week for all six of you, and you've got like some a decent amount of fresh water and more to the point vessels for fresh water there's like a rain catcher and then some like hard tack and trail rations gotcha yeah remember it fit mostly in one canoe so there's not that much yeah right there's a good bit but it's not a lot correct and it, it's it's like... stuff that's really good to have but it's not comprehensive by any means yeah because I asked you guys three times what you wanted, and you didn't say anything, so... Would the doctor need help setting up the tent? Probably not, no. You're yeah, on, I'm like, a fertile riverbank. The ground is soft. I think regardless, I think the doctor's, like, watches Brick, like, set everything up. And then I think she's like, Hey, Brick, can you come take a look at something for me? The doctor wants to talk to Brick about private stuff. Sure. Alright, he put the jug down and walk over. What is it you would, need? Would the doctor have seen that he, like, found the jug? Probably or... not, because the supplies would be back here. Fair. And you guys are working... I'm assuming you're just expanding the existing campsite, but that might be wrong. Yeah, that's what I was thinking we were doing. Just expanding okay. the existing then ones. Then, yeah, your, your line of sight of this part of the of the be uh, beach, it's not a beach, bank, is uh, probably less because of where you have to place the tent. Got it. I'm, I noticed last night you've kind of locked up. Um, I'm gonna ask bluntly, how are you coping? I know a lot has happened in the past week, couple of days alone. I'm fine, lass. Here's the thing. You forget that I'm a soldier. That doesn't mean anything. I've seen my fair share of death. That doesn't mean it hasn't left its mark. To verify, like, this is something Z and I won't be hearing, correct? Uh, correct. So, uh, Sib specifically said, called the brick over in private. Yeah, okay, just wanted to make sure. So, it's like, yeah, like, the doctor's right, maybe Brick isn't 
like quite dealing with it perfectly, but also he's too proud to show weakness in front of her. I'm curious, is that dwarvish pride or Baldian pride or both? Probably a mixture of both. What experience does the have does the doctor have with people who like don't grieve? Like people who refuse to do it? Um, I don't think it I don't think that's a fair question. I don't think Brick is refusing to grieve. Yeah. I just don't think that he's grieving in a way that Dr. Lorelai understands. Um I will say, like, yeah, you you have experience with a lot of different cultures. And you could pretty definitively say that, yeah, like, there are cultures that are more personally reserved than others, and Sergeant Holderheck before you is a perfect cocktail of arguably the worst offenders. He is a shield, uh, shield dwarf, he is a, from Baldur's Gate, which is an extremely, like, keep-to-yourself city, and he's a soldier, like... Getting Brick to, like, if Brick smiles at you, it's probably a big deal. That's yes. not to say that Brick is unfeeling by any means. It's just he probably expresses himself very subtly because that's the way that he was always raised. Fair. I think the doctor just kind of leaves it at just... It's not my specialty, but if you ever need someone to talk to, I'm here. And she kind of smiles a little. There's a there's a slight rumble in the ground that you all take notice of, and, and you look up as the big Trek's head, like, rolls backwards off of its neck. Oh. Ugh. Ew. Messy. Eh. I mean, the head is as big as one of the humans, and if a human hits the ground, like, you would feel it. It's like that type of thing. Doctor kind of grimaces. The offer stands regardless, Sergeant. And she, like, walks. I, I appreciate it, but I think I'll be all right. Mr. Brick. Oh, what now? Sorry, I just wanted to inquire about my previous question. Oh, yes. Uh, examining the gun. Won't take more than a moment, I promise. So, he'd unload it first, and then hand it over. I, I mean, good, very well, very well uh, described there. But I don't think Brick would walk around with a loaded gun, if I'm honest. Fair. Is it just assumed that I load it during initiative then? Correct. Okay. <laughs> I can at least see Brick stopping to unless, do it after um, the hordes. Yeah, unless you tell me otherwise, I think it's more dangerous to walk around with a loaded gun than an unloaded one, so... Initiative starts Brick. Yeah, like, like you guys are rolling for initiative, backpacks are hitting the ground, weapons are coming out, like, I assume that's just a given. Now, that being said, if at any point you want to have your gun loaded and ready, feel free to let me know. I just took the path of common sense on that, and if you disagree, yeah, that's fine. But, no, 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 that, that's, that's perfectly fine, and that is, like, Brick would not walk around in a loaded, with a loaded gun in that case. That being said, no. you could totally, like, check and make sure that it's not loaded before you give it to the turtle. That's fine, too. Yeah, like, he would check. And then he'd hand it over. So, Z, you have a a gun... I almost said gunsmiths, that's not right. Gunslinger's uh, pistol. Mm. I'm gonna do the Z's examination as a ritual. Okay. Uh, by touching a thing is you are told what it does, where it was made, who made it, what's it made from, and what its purpose is, and if there's any magic effect. Uh, and if it is magic in any way, it has no effect. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so you, you cast Z's Examination uh, on it. Do you have... Oh, no, you have an Arcane Focus. Duh. Yeah. 
Did I really say 100 GP? I thought I said 10 GP. Uh, I think... Didn't we base it off of Identify? I, but Identify is 50. Nope. A pearl worth at least 100 GP. Is it really? Uh -huh. Wow, okay. Then yeah, fair it, enough. It's um, just every wizard always has do a Do you focus. have an agate? I do not. Then you, I, can, then you I, can't cast that. Even with my focus? Because it has a specific dollar amount. You have to have that item. Oh fuck me! Yeah, the the arcane focus offsets the the like you don't need the raven feather, but you do need the agate. Ah uh, shit! What a word. And this. also, what's really shitty about this, and I'm sorry, is I never liked the fact that the pearl for identify wasn't consumed, so I've always had it consumed. And if we're basing this off of identify, then the agate would also be consumed. I was gonna say we should have a pearl, but I'm guessing that can't be substituted in. Uh, no. And where'd you get the pearl? Uh, Sparky picked it up at the very beginning of the story from the bag of jewels that we ended right. up throwing. But no, no, you, you can't substitute it, unfortunately. I figure it was always in Haversack because I know that's where Sparky put it. Fuck, that is it. A... Yeah, I assumed you had that agate, friend. I was under the assumption I didn't need it because I had a focus. No, it, like you, that's that's what you had said before. It well, I thought it was fifty. That that's the issue. Uh, I think I think an arcane focus ob obfuscates up to a hundred gold. I could be wrong about that though. But I know it. But I know it says if it has a specific gold amount, the arcane focus doesn't cover the cost. Even casting as a ritual, you can't do that. Correct. Hmm. The only thing the ritual does is it saves your spell slot. The doctor has a component pou pouch, but I don't think an agate would be in like, there. Like, unless any of you specifically spent 100 gold on an agate, you don't have it. Yeah, well, no, in that case, agate. never now, mind now, that now, idea. Now, that being said, that being said, because this is, you know, a reasonable oversight to make, if you've got 100 gold and you would rather have an agate, I would let you retroactively transfer that. I don't have I don't have that. Yeah, then you have to find one. Because I, I had to I had to do cash to get my hands on wizardy shit. I mean, that being said, like, where do gems come from? I... Chol. Yeah. Right. So, like, there you let you let me get a diamond for like a quarter of the price. Uh huh. There is a there is a a, a greater than zero percent likelihood. That if you just like wander around this area with an axe, you might be able to find some gems. I don't know if it will be an agate. I don't know if it will be an agate worth a hundred gold, but you will have an easier time doing that here than Waterdeep. Yeah. Fuck. All right. I guess I'm trading spells because I literally cannot get use out of them. I mean, you can mm -hmm. still examine the thing. Yeah. No, I'm I'm definitely gonna do that for now. Okay, make a make an investigation check. Like the only thing Z's examination does is it makes it you don't have to roll an investigation check, really. Like well, it, te it tells you the who, what, where, and why, and that's all a of lot which of information you, to get. All of which you can determine with an investigation check. Like, and the same thing with identify. Like you could spend time with an object and use an arcana check, but identify lets you do it quickly and without the check. You can't and, fail. And it determines the effect of items that would require attunement to I, show mm -hmm, the, the mm -hmm. No, you're completely right. But what I'm saying is it just does it for free without a check. That, that's the trade-off. You're trading magic for, you know, something you can roll a little bit more dangerously with a chance to fail. You know what I mean? Yeah. So with that roll... Um, I would say you can choose two of the things that Z's examination would tell you, and you can and you can use those. Okay. There is currently no magic on it. I will say that. Also, according to chat, it's no gold cost at all. Yeah, I just googled that. That is. And I Arcane Focus is really good for most spells. It's just the ones that require a specific item that costs money. Uh, it, it's a balancing factor. Yeah. 
Yep. Um. So what do you want to know? Where and what from? Oh, uh, where it was made. Um, a tinker's workshop sourcing uh, Baldian materials. And what it's made from a mix of iron, bronze, and wood. And a wee bit of no mission sanity. Huh. I see. That would explain why it's different than what I'm admittedly very mildly familiar with. It wasn't made in a smithy shop at all. Tinker's shop. Yeah. He, he like, raises it to brick. Alder's gate, huh? You're... You've been able to tell where it was made. Well, certainly. You can tell you can tell the quality of a material based on where it's from most of the time. Alder's gate tends to, uh, shall we say, not skip any coin when it comes to getting good materials. I suppose you're right. What's fascinating to me is its overall effectiveness for where it was made. Your friend must have been very talented. At that, Brick kind of clams up again and just goes, yeah, he was. If and I have it you... back now. Of course, here. If it makes you feel better with talents like those, I'm sure by now he's forging more stars for the sky as we speak. <laughs> like, I almost want to say Brick might take offense to that. I was going to ask, is that Z kind of, like, acknowledging that he knows Sparky's dead, or...? Well, he was told. Well, yeah, he was He was told that he knows that Sparky's dead. Uh, if anything, I don't think he would take offense to it, Brick, because that's Moradin's thing. Um, I would I would say that's Z trying to, like, be culturally sensitive. Because he assumes that Sparky's a dwarf. Mm-hmm. Z hasn't been told anything about Sparky. And if, if he's a friend of Brick, to Z, it's a natural connection that well-made product... Baldur's Gate, Tinker Shop, Dwarf. No, I don't, I don't think there's anything to be offended from in that. I think maybe he's just confused, like, because... <laughs> why, why would he be making stars? Well, that, I guess that depends. Does Brick know anything about the, like, standard dwarf, like, the orthodox dwarfish faith? I feel like he'd know a bit. Okay, then, like, yeah, like, basically... He doesn't practice it, but... Right. Basically, what what Z said was he, he assumes that Brick is Jewish. Bear with me. And Sparky is Jewish. And so he tried to give a culturally appropriate, like, Jewish, like, epitaph, and he just said it wrong. That's all. Yeah, yeah, I get it now. It's just like, yeah. Weird, weird situation to face. Brick might like look at him a little cockeyed and go like, why would Sparky? Like, I think he's a little dense to like, catch on to the fact that I, he thinks that Sparky's a dwarf, but... I assumed all exceptionally talented dwarves were taken into Moradin's apprenticeship. Sparky was a gnome. How? Um. Well, I'm sorry. That was a little insensitive of me, then. Brick probably just takes a deep breath. No, it's fine. I appreciate the sentiment. 
Z realizing I don't think he knows anything about gnome culture. I mean, the fact of the matter is, I would say a substantial percentage of D&D players don't know about gnome culture. Gnomes are really underappreciated. They really are! They really are! Oh, I tried. I just want that to go on the record. You did, and it was appreciated because Sparky was one of the more interesting characters. The man decided to shoot an elemental with a cannon from a ship. Yep. You can, you can say what you want about the other decisive action characters. That is the biggest, like... <laughs> type play. I know, I was having fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. Welcome to Schult. Oh. So. Anyways. I should review some notes. I, I think it, it's like his natural reaction. I made a mistake here. I'm going to read. And I'm going to think about, I'm going to make it seem like I'm not thinking about this while I try to de-escalate it for myself. Thank you and good night. Well, if they don't need you, Sergeant, perhaps you can be of assistance to us. Yeah, all right. He'd walk over. What do you need? I don't mean to assume, but, um, do you have a large cutting blade by any chance? I have a spear, not very good for this work. Unless you want to use the knight's sword, I don't have anything. Wait, don't you have the scimitar? I sold it. Ah, Shago, Shago blinks and he says, I assumed you would have an axe or a pick or something uh, I've got a pick is that really good for separating this thing it's better than a spear yeah all right he'd go and grab his miner's pick from the supplies yeah and, and Shaga like takes it and the thing about it is like a trex is so big that you can kind of mine with it it's not the best thing in the world, but it's better than, like, anything either of they have. Like, I think Azaka has... Let me double-check this before I put my foot in it. But I think, like, I know Azaka has a longbow. And I think she mostly uses her claws. I don't know if she has an actual, like... I thought she had a scimitar. Uh, yeah, she does. She does have a scimitar. Even still, though, like, neither... Like, what you really need for this type of work is, like, a kukri. And I don't think either one of them have a kukri. Um... Granted, you don't either, but still. Um, yeah. But yeah, you, you can see they're like, they're like parting out this thing. And they're not necessarily treating it like an animal. I mean, they, they are, obviously. They're a big pile of meat on a tarp. But they're also like, like, they're using all of it. They're like cutting out the claws and the teeth. Uh, they're like, like, carefully winding the sinew around a little, like, a small bone so they can, like, have a spool of it. They're, like, carving all of the fat. Make, like Basically, they're breaking this thing down like an alchemist. Out of character, I genuinely wonder if there is any medical use for any of this. I mean, maybe? You'll forgive me, but almost certainly. If you look at if you look at how sturdy a Tyrannosaurus has to be, you could easily use its sinew as something of a stitching. A stitching, a casting. Stitching you'd have to get it awfully thin. True. But all the same, possible. Well, I can't split. Right. It's more than certain that it has n a number of medical uses. It's just a matter of how creative can you get with what you have. Mm. 
one second. I have a mouthful of toast. Just straight up regular toast? Toast is good. Okay, that's better. I thought you guys were going to talk a bit longer, so I took a big bite. Sorry. Oh, you're good. I'm waiting for think, the, a good moment with the turtle. I think the doctor is, like, going to be looking over, like, trying to see if maybe she can figure something medical out that she could use some of this for. But I don't know if the, how that would work. Not very good out in the jungle, and that's why the Choltons are like, we need to take this back to the port. Fair. Right. To properly make use of something like the sinews, like, yeah, you could absolutely use those as, like, stitching or a makeshift cast. Like, Azaka's got a motor back to port to make use of this stuff. Right. To, to actually get those uses out of this stuff, you'd need some kind of makeshift adhesive, which would require either, f like, a lot of fruit and a lot of time to ferment that fruit to get it to the right consistency. Or boiled fat. Or boiled fat, which still, that's a lot of time to properly boil the fat. Into they're, what, they're, into... what, the, what the Choltons are doing is they're taking the thing apart and the stuff that absolutely needs to get back to town, they're going to load it on a canoe and Azaka's going to just meow, go straight back to Port Nantara with it. Uh, the stuff that can keep, like the bones and the teeth and the claws, they're probably going to leave here with Shago. Fair. Got it. But like, for example, the sinew, the meat, the organs especially, the hide, which let's face it, there's a lot of hide on this motherfucker. Oh, yeah. That stuff will spoil in a matter of either hours or days. Now granted, you guys have bought a day with Gentle's Repose, which is great, but still, Azaka's gonna rush back to the port, and still she might get told, like, we can't use the liver. I thought, I looked up Gentle Repose, and it said it lasts 10 days. Oh, does it? Well, that's great, then. Yeah. That's great, then. 10 days. Yeah. I imagine the unit is Zaka just rolling up to port with the dinosaur, and there's like, how the fuck? Yeah, but but still, they're going to take the pair, she's going to take the pair of those perishable stuff back to camp, or back to town, and Shago is going to, like, stay here and, like, scrape the bones clean and, like, clean up everything, but the non-perishable stuff, and just keep that with y'all. But that being said, like, with... If and when Azaka comes back, I say if because anything can happen, but also it's Azaka. Um, she's gonna have a shit ton of gold. Yeah. Like a fuck ton of gold. We're gonna be in it good. I honestly. She might not bring it back. To be clear, she might not yeah. bring it back. But if you guys survive and make it back to the port, she'll be like, "Here's your gold," especially brick. I yeah. I think actually the doctor might want to like ask if someone wants to come with her. Like she isn't going to leave camp, but she's going to basically walk around the perimeter and just take a look. Like she'll keep camp in sight, but she's not going to just walk around the base of the camp. If Shaga doesn't offer, Brick will go with her. I mean, I think I think Shaga will let it be your preference, Brick. Like. But he'll say, like, if you want me to go, I need you to hear, like, carve up this corpse, because, like, we can't let it sit. Uh, honestly, then I think I'd, uh, leave Shago to carve the corpse, and I'll go with the doctor. Okay, yeah, because the, the Chultons know what they're doing. They can break down a Thunder Lizard. That's not a big deal. So, yeah, you, yeah. And, you and, and the doctor can head, head out on a, on a little walkabout. I'm assuming, like, you're just seeing if there's anything interesting nearby. Not too much like if there's anything right. like on the off chance the doctor can figure out who the hell was out here she's so, looking for that but she's also making sure that like they aren't getting waited upon those are two different else. checks fair uh so if you just want to like do a walkabout and see what's here that's an investigation check if you're looking for somebody that's a survival check um, and depending on what you tell Brick, uh, you might be making one of those checks with advantage. 
I think she's going to mostly just go for the investigation to see, like, what's out here. She admits, okay. like, I just want to take a look at what's around to see what's out here. It, on the off chance I see something that might indicate what happened to my fellow Brotherhood members, good. If I don't, oh well. So why don't you make that investigation check, and since I'm assuming Brick is going to help you, you can make that with advantage. In the yeah. meantime, uh, Cyrodeath, you said you wanted to have a conversation with Z? I think so, yes. All right, Doctor, uh, be, think relations. be thinking of five questions that you want to ask me. And All Z, right. Cyrodeath, you have the floor. So, uh, like, right now, Z is reading basically in his books, trying to kind of not draw attention to himself, correct? Yeah. He's he, he he pretty much pulled a big fat like uh scroll case off his back, pulled out a bunch of papers and a book, and is just going through all of it, checking notes and stuff. Probably most of it written in a different language. Uh you believe then Sirdef would like walk up and stand in front of the turtle like not literally at attention, like, not literally at military attention, but basically at attention in front of him. If that makes sense. Like, she's standing up straight and tall and clearly kind of like in the I mean business pose, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, would Z notice that or? Yeah, it's just. Can I help you? I had been meaning to ask. So there is nothing you can tell me about your condition? Well, uh, technically, no, unfortunately. What you are aware of is what I am able to express. I think Sarah like stares at him for a bit before laying out, the, like just a slight, not like a home, like a home for a deep sigh, just more like a kind of like a just a frustrated sigh, if that makes sense. Sure. Okay. What can you tell me at least of undead in general? Of undead in general. What it, could I tell? Sirida? Make a religion check. Luckily, I'm not bad at those. Uh, the bishop is gonna ha cast in, uh, guidance on you as well. Ooh. Oh, I thought you were about to have the bishop attack Sarah. Then I was like, No, no, Wait, no, no, what? no. The bishop is just gonna give you a d4. Uh, uh, so what can you tell Sarah Death about the nature of undeath? Um, undead are their own category of monsters, but there is no such thing as an undead that's not an aberration, so to say, like in the literal sense of that word. Um, undead don't come about by accident. Um, well, wild magic surge notwithstanding. Undead come about because of magic like you don't just a corpse what? completely left to its own devices is never going to get back up right right whether whether it be like magic that's radiated and poisoned the ground or someone directly raising the dead and that someone could be a god but yes um uh, to... the nature of undead is generally that of evil um that being said there are undead with souls in them, and those undead can choose their path regardless of their circumstances, but most of them tend towards evil. Um, they are often immune to the magic of death, save for their creator. Excuse me. Um, mm. And depending on if they retain their soul, which is not the same thing as retaining their memories, by the way. Um, you can have one without the other in both directions. Um, regardless, or depending on whether or not they have a soul, depends generally on how strong they are, as well as what they're good for. Um, 
a body with nothing in it is good for like very simple tasks that you don't care about how quickly they're done uh most notably being defend this spot um and then it goes up from there up to you know having your own undead minions and like you know liches and and how smart they are comparably and things like that um necromancy generally is because you roll very well i mean you got a goblin 20 like Necromancy right. is generally considered a a willful school of magic. Um, to to do something necromantically, uh, to to exert, you know, your will on an undead, uh, takes a a substantial amount of will. Um, basically, what that means is most uh, necromancy spells are charisma based or wisdom based, but usually charisma. Um, and um, polite society takes a dim view of necromancy in very broad strokes. Um, that being said, Schult, well, I need to be careful with this. Schult, in living memory, has issue with undead, obviously, because undead are a problem in the jungle and they're, they're killing people constantly. But right. Schultons do not have a grim view on necromancy itself i mean for fuck's sake the bishop just cast a necromancy spell and neither one of the children gave a shit in fact they asked for it right um, it was like up oh, necromancy whereas cool in thing. whereas in water deep you'd be looking at a fine or potentially like being arrested right, right. you hit uh, a body you hit a body in water deep with a spell like that and it's like right thank you very, very much for your service here's your ticket yeah you need like a permit for that shit <laughs> Uh, quick question about on that subject. Uh, would the Shultons recognize it as necromancy? I mean, Shago asked for it, so yeah. Okay, so j just figure I'd clarify that. Um, other than all of that, I think it's reasonable that you have three necromancy-based questions if I didn't cover something that you want to hear about. So... How 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 is a is a creature is an undead creature capable of building its own strength to develop consciousness a, a will of its own? It depends on how it was raised. Um, a a zombie or a ghoul or a skeleton cannot be greater than the sum of its parts. There there's not a lot of room for growth there. Now, that being said. Depending on the fiction, um, a ghoul can start at a higher at a higher plane of consciousness, um, and potentially extend itself from there. But but a zombie and a skeleton, basically, like never. They're just grunt muscle. They're basically automatons. Um, to clarify, a, a, like, they have no true thought in a sense. Pretty much, right. yeah. They're they're very similar to automaton. Like, uh, there there are arguments, and and Z, I am certain this is an argument that has been heard in the halls of Blackstaff Tower. What's the difference between a, a clean skeleton and a shield guardian? Right. Um. I think that's been like I think that's been a matter of debate for for some few years now. Um. That makes me think what Z's perspective is. That being said, uh, higher undead... I'm saying that being said a lot tonight. I'm sorry, guys. Um, higher higher undead that do not necessarily, like, take the typical undead route, like liches, vampires, uh, whites, um, arguably wraiths in some description, um, revenants, etc. Um, less so revenants because they're on a time limit, but the other ones that I mentioned... Um, if they have their soul and they are conscious, they can grow in other ways. But generally speaking, a vampire cannot become a higher, like a higher undead, if that makes sense. Mm. Uh, it, it could be, it could be powerful in other ways, like, um, Strahd von Zerovich, he's a higher vampire, but he's also an archmage, right? Like, yeah. 
but he can't really grow as a vampire. I mean, he kind of can a little bit in that he can strengthen his abilities, but he can't become something else. Right. So, leading me into my next question. Sure. Can an undead wield a magic item and building upon that, can they wield a magic item requiring attunement? Yes. Hmm. Even a skeleton can. Oh, wow. Okay. In fact, a very cheap way to make a sentry is to make a skeleton, give it an amulet of shield, and, like, a flaming sword, and you've just, like, doubled its combat effectiveness. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, no, it's super common. Well, I say super common. Super common in less agreeable circles. Yeah, no, that, that's, a, that's very much a thing. Yeah, okay. And, uh, sorry, I'm closing a thing. No worries. Um... Last question. What should it be? What should it be? What should it be? I threw Gamzee for a loop because I don't usually just say a blanket yes like that. Yeah, that kind of hit me like a wall. I had the terrible thought when you just gave that blanket yes of you give it a sword and a certain amulet, and I just had the thought of like a bunch of liches or necromancers talking about how they've suited out their goddamn armies like it's Pokemon cards or some shit. Why do you like, think liches collect magic items? Fox, you gave that blanket yes, and it felt like someone just put me in Gmod with a wall that has rocket boosters on it coming at me. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Here's a good one, I think, for my last one. What are some notably famous undead Z would know about? Ooh, Be good question. Good question. Good question. Uh, Strahd von Zarevich just comes to mind right. immediately. In any, anybody oh. anybody familiar with Blackstaff Tower uh, is familiar with Strahd von Zarevich because um, Mordenkainen had it out for him. Oh. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, Fuck you, Morinen. I control a realm. Yeah, pretty much. Like, Z does not know what happened to Mordenkainen. He does not know that Mordenkainen is in Barovia, but he does probably know that Mordenkainen was looking for a way to, like, fix this, like, planar abdication that is Barovia. Um, so, Strahd comes to mind immediately. Uh, let's see, other famous undead. Uh, there, there's not a lot depending, like, gods gods count, I guess, there's a lot of uh, like, it's like Mergle, the Lord of Bones and uh, like, a couple of the a couple of the, the human triumvirate have died and come back and that technically counts, I think Helm brought himself back to life, which is technically making him an undead um so, so those, I, those definitely come to mind, what do you got? I, to build on this question, like, types... I have more. I, I just want to ask, while it's on my mind, does he know, like, do... Is a dragon lich a thing? A draco lich? Yes, a draco lich is a thing. However, for some reason, draco liches tend to be servants. For whatever reason, dragon souls do not respond well to being resurrected. Um... Huh. Draco liches tend to be subservient. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, Vecna, thank you, chat. Uh, Vecna's a, a pretty famous, like, arch lich. Um, Vecna's also, like, technically a devil, though, so I don't know if that would count. Um, Aren't uh, arch liches, like, everything a lich aspired to become and then utterly failed? Uh, that depends on the edition. Uh, in 5th edition... Uh, liches, arch liches are not that great, but in like third edition, uh, arch liches are extremely powerful, and uh, I tend to flavor mine in, in that camp. So you know, arch liches are a big deal. Um, speaking of arch liches, um, there is the the dimensional hopping 
uh, Asiterak, I think is how you say his name, uh, who is an Arch Lich. He's relatively famous. Um, depending on how much Zine knows about other planes, uh, there's plenty of undead in uh, in Eberron. Mm. Um, let's see. Most of the quote end quote famous undead are like undead weapons made by someone else if that makes sense yeah. like the graveyard golem that's a thing um it is as bad as it sounds i uh, would imagine it there's sounds there's, like there's just also them. uh there's also a, a rather famous uh flesh golem named stitches um oh there's frankenstein's monster um what yeah you can you can play Frankenstein with Indy. Huh. Um, Awful. But yeah, it it is bad. But no, there there's not a lot of famous undead. I, I I would say there's no famous undead. There's infamous ones, and even those, they're they tend to be viewed through the lens of like far off entities, because thinking about them being approachable is awful. Because these things transcend the great excuse me, the greatest challenge of life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I, I think Z has been doing this, like, I, like, explaining this stuff with, like, certain, like, mini illustrations he has, he has on pieces of paper. Um... If you've never heard of Strahd, well, lucky you. He's apparently an asshole. Um, Strahd von Garbage, you big nerd, where's my fucking money? I don't personally know much about him, but that's because vampires have never interested me. Uh, to say Strahd is a vampire is a little bit like saying Heracles is a strong dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's true, but you're kind of missing the point. Um, what about Hercules? Da, 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 da. I, I say vampire, but he's more like an arch magi vampiric being with omniscient power over a small realm. Someone should do something lovely. about him, Turtle. Oh, ah, someone is. I just don't think they've been successful yet because Shiver Barovia... goes back to cleaving through meat. I don't think Barovia has returned yet. Barrow who? Exactly. In other words, something beyond us at this moment. Yes, greatly. Though, you know what? I think the Vistani would quite enjoy Cholt. I imagine that would get, well, because what would I know about the undead in the world? Make a religion check. And watch as I roll on that one. Zombie go arg. Um, you know, you know slightly less than Z. Z is, Z is a, a big fucking nerd. Uh, but you know that, uh, you know most of the things that I said about the practical information of undead, you know that uh, undead don't don't happen by accident usually uh there's various tiers of undead whether or not they have their memories and soul matters a lot of necromancy is uh abhorrent and uh oftentimes it's, it's yeah it's focused on on willpower you know all of that for sure do you know unique ways to kill your own kind my race no, the undead. Oh, I was just gonna say, just flip us on its back, flip us on our back, and just go to town. Um. Oh. That for so that just. I'm not gonna lie. That just conjured really bad images all of a sudden. I'm bad sorry. City, bad. Uh, I mean, sorry, that's the point. I think you're fine. Anyway. Ah. Uh, Fun fact, real quick. Uh, we turtles used to be from uh, Chult, 
until the segmentation of our island, our land was uh, caused in a great seismic shift. Real lore, apparently. Though undead, to put it in the bluntest terms I know, zombie go arg die when hit. Bonus points if it's magic. My queen gives me much magic. I've that seen. I know. I've seen. You're quite impressive with it. My main issue is, is that as these last few days have shown me, is I am not adaptable enough to different kinds of enemies. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Adaptability, one always seems to equate to ability and not knowledge. I would dare say your issue with adapting to new undead isn't the matter isn't the matter of what you are capable of, it is what you are aware of. Um, I think, like, that would just get a cocked eyebrow again from Sarah Death. Uh, allow me to explain. Um, if we are in a situation where we are surrounded by a white, six zombies, and four ghouls, what do you think you should go for first? I think just at the mention of, because I don't think this is Z's intent at all, like real life Z, but just the fact that it sounds so similar to what happened to Scratch, I think Sarah Death would just narrow her eyes and just with a bit of a, like, force behind it, the wisp, or the white, eh. An entirely valid thought, though one should also consider the fact that ghouls possess a paralytic ability. Meaning, if they are to uh, make contact and you are to fall susceptible to their ability, their poison toxin, I'm not at this time sure what it is specifically, um, but if you fall prey to it and become paralyzed, you become easy prey, no? So, Sarah Death, since I'm assuming you're facing Z. Yes. Uh, you see it because there's no re no way for you to not, but I was like, I got a nat 20 to creep up behind Z. So she's got her finger on her lips looking at you. And right when he says easy prey, she's like crouched down behind him and she grabs him by both of his shoulders and shouts boo. Oh my God. <laughs> have you ever have you ever heard that noise that's always coming from like a tortoise? Like whenever whenever it decides to speak up, that noise tortoises make. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 vaguely goat like. Imagine that at the decibels of a child throwing a tantrum. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Scream, turtle, fall over. I imagine turtle What were you saying about the easy play, turtle? Rude. Fucking rude. <laughs> he pops his head out slightly. I will admit, I get a little too in-depth into my own explanations and become quite susceptible to such things, but that was also quite rude. I am old. Okay, I'm not that old, but still. I'm, I'm 65. It, she, she, she turns and she goes, Hey, Shago, how do you tell how old a turtle is? And Shago looks over. I don't know how. You'll count its rings. She comes back over to the Rex. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm still laughing a bit at that. Fucking rude, Azaka. <laughs> I... He like unturtles and slowly sits up, keeping his eye on Azaka. Right. Yes. I thought I was gonna die. Okay. Fuck. 
I imagine if they wanted you dead, Turl, I don't think you'd even know of it until you're bringing the queen in person. Right. Well, ah, that reminds me. Uh, they aren't particularly undead, but I have useful information for you in case you ever get separated. Lean forward, Gamzee. I have useful information in case you ever get separated. I'll need to share this information with everyone at some point. Aside from our esteemed guides, I'm sure. There is a race known as the Grung. A small uh, amphibians. Well, small, small by whose standards, Turtle? Well, they're certainly not small by their by comparison to their appetite. They're as big as the dragon. Yes. Relative to other amphibians with their level of sentience, I should say. Wait, there's bigger things in the ground? Oh, certainly. Um, I think both of the Chilton guides like pause to like ogle at you for a second. It's kind of like an oh fuck. I'm unsure if there are any such creatures in Chilton, but I'm more than certain they exist. I did quite a lot of research back in my studious days. He says as he is currently in studious mode. I was going to say, he says from behind his giant encyclopedia. <laughs> I think they um, both they both do that like Disney slow turn back to their work. But yes, you can easily make deals with dealings with them, even if you don't understand the language. Um, all they really want is food or things they can easily make use of. I had my case here waterproofed by Grong. So they're intelligent then? Oh, certainly. In the same way that a pack of wolves is intelligent. Yes. Um, they are more sapient than a wolf, but they are less sentient than we. A important distinction to make. They even have their own language. I'm fluent, thankfully. <laughs> I think Shago nudges Azaka in that, hang on, something funny is going to happen. And then he looks over at, at Z. They're just, yeah, I don't, I don't know if Z is aware of it, but they both just like stopped working when he's like, I'm <laughs> fluent and grong. Like they're both just staring at him. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, good dame, but many of we wizards uh, tend to write in shorthand and often elect to create our own forms of code. Most of my notes are written in grung language using my own form of shorthand. It's a good way to keep my notes private until necessary to share. Unless a grung gets a hold of them. Well, yes, if a grung gets a hold of them, then they'll have the issue of deciphering my shorthand, and, well, if they do that, then we have a magic grung on our hand. But, I don't see that being too much of a problem. So, if you don't mind, Death and Z, uh, Brick and the Doctor have been quite patient, and I do want to see what uh, I... questions Sibs has thought up. Yeah, I need to yeah, disappear for a little bit anyway. No worries, take it easy. I'll be back in like 10 plus. Appreciate it. So yeah, so uh, Dr. Lorelai, you had like five questions about the surrounding area of the camp. What would you like to know? I, I will give you this information for free. The relatively muddy riverbank expends, or extends rather, pardon me, like 20 feet in either direction of the map. Um, It's you know, on the river, it's naturally, like, devoid of plants in a specific area. But the jungle begins again, not far off the top of the screen. Um, 
it is dense jungle, but it doesn't have the pervasive smell of rot that you've been dealing with for most of your journey so far. Uh, it's still present, but it's not as bad by any means. Um, it is dark off of the bank. If you, if you go into the trees just a couple of feet, it becomes dark, and those of you without dark vision will have difficulty seeing without a light. Uh, very wow. dense jungle. Um, it's relatively protected from the rain. Uh, there are bugs the fuck everywhere. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, like, literally an army of drow could be watching you right now, and you would have a hard time seeing them. Um, I'm so that's what you got for free. What would you like to know with your questions? Um, I wasn't here for most of that. I was in the bathroom. You weren't here for what I said just now? I only heard something about dense jungle. I said in backstage, uh, like in the um. Kind of ah, thing I missed it. Uh, the bank extends about 20 feet left and right and maybe another 10 feet up on this map. Uh, it is not really uh, plant, uh, I guess, full of plants. I don't know, it's, it's barren, it's muddy. Um, good place to like set up. Uh, the jungle is very thick and dark. There's bugs everywhere. Just to go a couple of feet in the jungle, you either need like a means to see or you're gonna have trouble. The pervasive smell of rot is substantially lessened in this area, uh, but it is still, like, identifiable. Um, and the, uh, the river is, uh, deep and slow in this area. And then, and then I gave you, like, five questions to ask me about the area. Yeah, so literally you took, like, half of my questions off the list just by telling us what we got for free. Good! Then you have more questions! Yeah, I just haven't thought of what they are. Um, one of the ones that Vader asked, that's actually a really good idea now that I think about it. Are there any, like, mineral reserves, or would we have to do some digging for that? Uh, you would certainly have to do some digging for it. But, uh, why don't, uh, whoever has higher of the two of you, uh, make a nature check with advantage, and we'll see. That's probably the doctor. I've got a minus one. My nature is a two, so let's take a look at how this goes. Okay. Um, yeah, there's probably some, some, like, something about the mud leads you to believe that there would be, there could be mineral deposits, like, hidden in the undergrowth, uh, in this area. Um, maybe obsidian, maybe, at the very least, good quality clay. Um, the, the conditions are right for silver, uh, or iron, which would in turn lead to um, like precious stones because of because of the carbon content uh, so there there could certainly be mineral deposits but you would need to clear cut the jungle to find them all right um, I don't know if I can get an answer with this one but any signs of humanoid life uh, there's a couple of tents on the beach and a fire pit and a bunch of supplies on a tarp and, uh, oh, there's people on the beach. No, um, shit, I was more referring to, like, anything in the jungle. Yes, I know. Uh, there's a reason that I didn't say anything about that. Well, I assume? Uh, no, they're, like, you can't see any signs of anything in the jungle because it's so dense. Got it. Um. Which is weird, because, like... The the trike and the tracks probably came from the jungle, unless they came up the river, which is looking more and more plausible, because there's no, like, Godzilla destruction. Fair enough. Uh... Which is actually a good thing. It means that nothing big has crossed that way recently. Quick question. Which way did the trike go when it That left? is a valid question. I think the trike went this way uh, fuck, come on work with me like this like because you guys were here so it went like this like fuck like this way uh before you set the tent up obviously and then it would have disappeared like up off of the off of the screen that way um 
which in that case yeah i think you would be able to, to spot that uh but you don't see where it came from <laughs> uh so three more questions i think yeah i believe so um you said that there weren't like a lot of plants here like there were plants but not like no there are a shitload of plants here the bank the riverbank itself is relatively devoid of plants uh, okay. and and full of turned earth um it could be that there were several people here and they clear cut the area or it's just a rain runoff spot either one of those would be we, no, like, the, the place where you guys are making camp is a big, bare, muddy, like, bank of the river, which is a, a good place to set up camp. Yeah. But, no, there's a shitload of plants on every side, just not in that area. All right. Then, are there, like, fruit trees in the jungle? Like, are there any edible fruit are trees? Are there fruit trees in the jungle? Yes. Um, like, near us. Uh... I mean, there's a lot of things near you. Are you going into the dark jungle to check? Not too far in. She's, like, keeping an eye on camp. Like, she's going to Are keep you, it inside. Like, but if you go into the jungle, you cannot keep an eye on camp. That's how dense it is. Like... Then no, not now. Then no. You don't, you don't immediately see any fruit trees. You see, like, with a 21 nature, you see, like, like, husks of of like fruit pods and things so there are very probably edible like plants near you guys but not on the beach devoid of trees i say beach bank got it so shit all my questions were kind of answered with um the stuff we already knew does I anyone mean, else Brick have can help you rick vader got anything yeah uh hmm really just i don't think i have any questions other than maybe like are there any like possible i'm trying to think of the right way to phrase this like Take your time. Not ambush points, but, like, points where yes. things could unexpectedly, like, pop out. Yes. Um, about 10 feet north of the map and 20 feet on either side of the map in any direction, uh, there, anything would basically have near total cover. All right. But likewise... Again, if like and and like you can you can easily make this test without endangering yourselves. Like, if you guys go just a couple of feet into the jungle, it's damn hard to see the camp. So, yeah. Like there could be like a like a one T traveling trail, you know, twenty feet into the jungle, and you would never cross paths. Okay. Unless you guys made like a shitload of noise, but still. Yeah. Yep. I think the doctor is like looking around and then goes, I think maybe eventually we should spread out a little into the gold, but with how thick it is, I don't think right now is a good chance to do it. You do one have one question. more question. Yeah. That's what I was making sure with. Um,. Fuck. Oh. Wait, no, that got answered. Sorry. I don't have anything else. Do any of you? I honestly can't think of much. Okay. Well, if you want to bank it for later, you can. Yeah, I'll bank it for later. Okay, so you and Brick, you know, check out the perimeter of the camp, and it, it seems pretty, like... I... 
there is nothing physically stopping you from going into the jungle, to be clear. It's not like it's a solid mat of trees and vines that you cannot bypass, which is a thing in certain parts of the like certain parts of the world. It's not that bad, but it is directly on the passable side of that bad, if that makes sense. So yeah, I know what you mean. Pretty secure, all things considered. Um, there's probably a reason that this camp was chosen by someone else. Um, but you, you do walk about, like, I gave you the information about the minerals. Um, aside from a source of potable water, this is, like, about as good a campsite as you've had in the jungle. But it rains all the time in Chult, so, like, who gives a shit? I think, like, as they're walking around and they're about to head back, it's like, I can understand why someone would have set up, up here. This is a really good spot. We're well hidden. If we literally walked a couple feet, I don't think we'd see camp at all. Mm-hmm. Then again, we just have to keep the noise down in case we have any wanderers out here. Speaking of which, I need to ask Azaka something. I mean, at any point during your walkabout, you could just turn your head and shout. Well, no, he's not going to shout at her. I'm just saying, like, she, she, with, within earshot is my point. May, like, once they're, like, hit, like, walking back towards camp, he'd address her. Okay, yeah, so you guys, you guys head back into camp. Uh, you see that the, uh, yeah. the, the Trex has had its limbs removed. It's, um, its back is, like, well, its belly is split open. It's on its back, and it's, like, splayed out on a tarp, and the, the Choltons are, like, removing the hide from the skeleton so you've got this big rack of like beef ribs looking thing on this massive hide that they're taking pains to unroll when you guys come back <laughs> they're chuckling about something what, what do you want to do you want to do Enjoying ourselves, are we? Enjoying your traveling companions, that's for certain. Azaka, I had a quick question for you. She, like, stops and, like, wipes some blood off of her face and, like, turns, like, just where she's crouched, just, like, turns her feet. And she's just like, here or elsewhere? Here's fine. The fists you saw... How far, and how many? Enough, and, uh, a day back? Why? If you said something, I think you cut out for a sec. Oh, apologies. She says, enough, and a day back. Why? Just making sure. I just wanted to know. That's not helpful. There's something on your mind. What is it? Ah, oh, shit. I'm, I'm still- I'm trying to think about a word this, as usual. My... duty... to the fists, to the marshal. I just can't afford to get caught right now. I don't know if you've noticed, Sergeant, but there's six of us. And I'm immune to arrows. I also don't think I could take my fellow soldiers' lives. All right, five of us. And I'm immune to arrows. She, like, tilts her head at you. Like, okay, like... I 
I'm not like trying to like. Yeah, you're you're fine, dude. I don't know. I'm not sure how to respond to that other than like. Like, is Brick going to say I don't want you to fight them either? I honestly think the doctor kind of goes for <laughs> of you and and your immune to arrows. I'm not supposed to. Unless necessary. So, we established that if I found Porter guilty of treason or whatever, the orders stated that uh, leadership of the fort would go to me, right? Yeah, you have to prove to it. You have to, you have to, like, prove it, and you have to get her, get her somewhere where that can be enforced. Um... But then afterwards, yeah, like, you would become the de facto leader of of the fort. You'd get, like, double promoted from, from like, field sergeant to, to major. If, or, or at least captain. Yeah, so essentially these would become my soldiers then. Uh, on paper, that's true. But if they're loyal to, if they're loyal to Porter, they might either go down with her or don't drink any tea they offer you. Yeah. Pretty much assume, like, I, I see what you're getting at. Pretty much assume any Flaming Fist soldier that will take up arms against you will continue to do that if you if you like take over for Porter. Not Porter. Okay. Cause otherwise they would have helped you. Cause this would is what they have though if like I can imagine some fists like, you know, they're just following orders. Right. Exactly. But Porter gives the order. Yeah. Until you have command of the fort. And I don't mean until Porter is in change. I mean literally until you can prove this is my fort now. Porter has the the standing order. And, yeah. and, and anybody who would take those orders to a violent extreme for Porter is going down with her. Like, that's just how it works. All right. That's fair. Because at best, they're going to get discharged by the new management. At worst, they're going to be imprisoned. Like, if... If it gets to the point where they're gonna fight you taking over for Porter, which, let's face it, that's gonna happen. Th yeah. Now, now, now. That being said, that being said, a a fist patrol out in the jungle, you might be able to talk down. That's essentially my point. Yeah. But no. If it comes to violence, like, it's just a matter of when it's going to come to violence. The question is, even if it comes to violence, I don't think Brick's going to kill them. Like, he'll incapacitate them for sure, but... Right, and, and that is completely your prerogative. It's a different matter entirely if you're like, Azaka Stormfang, don't kill them. Because Azaka is, like, well, let me back that up a little bit. Shago is in whatever boat you're in. Like, whatever they think of you, they also think of Shago, because Shago was visible helping you. Um, uh -huh. Whereas Azaka, because she's a were-tiger, is like, It, 
if she if she gets into a fight with them and they realize she's a were tiger, they're gonna burn her at the stake. Yeah. Uh, so she's going to kill them so that they can't wake up and let people know that she's a were tiger. If you if you're like Azaka, I don't want you to kill them. Her response is gonna be, then I can't fight them. I have to play the like mewling wave because otherwise I'm gonna get burned for being a witch. I figured that, or she just go, no, fuck you, and stab the nearest fist to the I face. I mean, no, that's exactly what will happen, but she's going to, like, explain the situation to Brick first. Like, Asaka's not going to let them burn her at the stake, obviously, but, like, you get my point. If, right. Brick, if Brick doesn't want to kill the fist, that's fine. More power to him. But, like, you need to be, like... You need to make it clear, like, me not killing the fist doesn't mean you can't defend yourself, or it does mean you can't defend yourself, and you need to make that plain. And I'm trying to decide which one is what Boric wants. I get you. Because it either gets some of, most of us, again, tied to posts in Fort Beluarian, or it gets us into another unfavorable position. Depending on how loyal they are to Porter, I want to avoid conflict if possible. And if it's not possible? We'll defend ourselves. Then we're in agreement. Yeah. There's something on your mind, Sergeant. I can see it. I'm not bloodthirsty, if that's your concern. No, just... It doesn't have to do with any of you. She, like... I'm just not sure what stance I have to take yet. She, like, shifts her weight, so she's, like, sitting on, like, the balls of her feet. Uh, and she says, um... Well, that depends. What's more important? Those gathered here, right now, or the ones aiming a crossbow at you? I, I understand that can be a, a difficult question for someone in a... in an organization such as yourself that's one of the reasons I'm a free agent and there's no like sarcasm in her tone like she's legitimately asking you he thinks about it cause like yeah that is a difficult question it's like does he harm members of his organization, fellow soldiers, in order to protect his traveling companions that he barely knows still, honestly. True, but yeah. he also... Brick is at least aware there is some kind of corruption in the fists here. He and just, something uh, to consider is, yes, they're wearing your colors, but you don't know any of these people either. Yeah. If Again, they aim your call at me, I won't back down from a fight. It's a difficult decision, Sergeant. It is. And it's a decision I think I've made. You see her, oh, like, very briefly glance down at the scimitar that's, like, resting on the tarp at her feet. Not, like you know, threateningly, just like, okay, I know where it is. I'm listening. There's something wrong with the fists and Jolt. From what I hear, there's something wrong with the fist everywhere. I've never seen it as bad as it is here. So and it I is think a bit Porter is the blame. Uh, 
What'd you say? She said so a little bit is excusable. I'm still not sure how to answer that <laughs> Like... That's the point, friend. There's no yeah. good answer to that question. Like, I think, like, I gotta take a Roy Mustang stance here. Like, one man cannot fix everything unless he's at the top. I, that's fair. And also, if you want to compare Brick to Roy Mustang, I think that's awesome. One man can only do so much. I've done what I can in every situation possible. I don't mean to imply that you haven't, Sergeant. But here, or the mainland, or wherever, very rarely is the symbol you carry met with cheers. And is something that I would say to anyone wearing our colors. But you're right, especially here in Cholt. I, they're no friends of mine. Present company excluded, of course. Uh, he sort of is taken aback by that for a second and then just goes, well, I'm glad you trust me at least. I trust you in a fight, if that's what you mean. I'm not going to invite you to my wedding. Not yet, anyway. Yeah. You lot are alright. Well, I don't know. I think Shaka's a little bit suspect. I can hear you, Osaka. And you know I'm right! You're suspect! I'm gonna go take psychic damage, be right back. <laughs> and she, she, she looks from, a, from Shago back to you, like, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh... Anyways... I really, my real, in, my only real intent was to gather just how far away from us they were. She makes like a vague gesture down river and she's like, back that way, however long we traveled. Yeah, and like, I guess like he'd nod at her and like get back to working on the camp. Yeah, I think, I think you turn away, and she says, um, like, as you go to walk off, she says, Did you find anything on the borders? Not much. I think the doctor, like, per pitches in, like, what they found. Like, it's dark, literally, once you just get barely in. There's a few fruit husks, etc., etc. She's basically running through the information they were able to gather. Good bit of minerals around here, from what I can tell, though, if we did a little bit of digging. Do you have a shovel? Um, I don't. At least, not that I'm aware of. I don't. We no, got. I don't. There was a pickaxe in the haversack. Yeah, well, Shago's currently using it to carve up the, the Tyrannosaurus. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, you do have a pick. And it probably has a spade on the back. Unless Sparky also had a pick. I don't know. Uh, Sparky at least did not. Knowingly have a pick. Alright, then well, yeah, that, that is no problem. We will need light, though, to go out into the jungle, though. It gets dark very fast. But you might need light, but the sergeant and I won't. Fair enough. But then again, I won't be here. Yeah. If you go a couple paces into the jungle, then you lose sight of camp almost exactly. We're pretty well hidden all things considered, as long as we don't make too much noise. This area is safe enough. It shouldn't be a concern. 
You say that, and look what you're carving. Do you That's know how rare these... these things are, Sergeant? That's a... No, I don't. The first That's time a... I've seen one this year. That's another unusual thing. I... The only real notable thing was the when the... Um... The herbivore, I don't remember what it's called. The... Tank puppy. <laughs> that. Um... It, I only saw the way it left. I don't know how it got up here. We didn't see anything else out there. No tracks that implied they came through the jungle. Hmm. You think that thing would leave a trail? Yes, I do. Turtle! Hmm? Is the jungle magic? Oh. Well, inherently speaking, nature is always magical. Particularly just... in this area. I'm... Not sure. Give me some time to investigate. And she looks back at the two of you like, see, I fixed it. Uh, he, he's he's going to get up and walk over to the tree line and start doing his thing. What, what thing are you doing? Uh... Damn it, we were still talking, turtle! <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, I think that fits these characters, is that's what Serendith is going to say as he walk ups and walks off. Dang. Don't ignore me, turtle. It will only take a moment, don't worry. Um, I think it's using some notes and, like, examining the gr examining the area. Because you, you can't, do you have you can't a means use to identify. See, do you know if there's means to, to, like, do you have some means to, to, to see magic? Lick the nearest rock. Um. Oh, I. Hmm. I do not. Uh, I have detect magic, but I don't know. It seems like it'd only go in like three feet. Well, I don't know. Is the jungle considered dense enough that like three feet of wood would block it? I feel. Uh. <laughs> Uh, that is a very valid question, and that's funny. No, I think it needs to be three contiguous feet. So, like, interspersed trees, I don't think would, would do that. Okay. That's really funny, though. Thank you. Oh. Hey, I mean, like, you never know with D&D. No, valid. Okay, Can't see shit. Magically. Can't see shit. So, to directly see magic, no. How does an Order of Scribes wizard not have detect magic? He forgot. <laughs> he be me. Actually, no, I that is incredibly stu Can I swap something? I, I set you up for an Always Sunny reference and you failed me, so no. Wait, what? That that implies that I've watched Always Sunny. It's a meme. No, it doesn't. I have... N what meme? The God, meme you're talking about that fucking stupid template based off of how does how do three men together not have five dollars? The economy. Yeah, exactly. The economy is it's, in shambles. It's, it's their pause. The economy is in shambles. That's exactly the meme that I was thinking of. I set you God. up and you didn't take it. How dare you? God, I hate that template. There's always money in the Manhattan stand. So, uh, so, friendo, uh, you do not have that spell as your order of scribes wizard, as a wizard, as a magic user, you do not have the most ubiquitous spell ever. Um, yes, I know. It's dawning on me how stupid that is. Yeah, but you are living with this choice, so. In your defense, I find this like, it's it, I like I so expected you to have it that the non magic NPC was like, you're one of them book magic things. You can see magic. Go check it. That's hilarious. Oh, my God. 
Uh, you you find it hilarious. I find it infuriating. I do not like this jungle, Azaka. Its smug aura mocks me. <laughs> Was, was, okay, forgive me. Was that a Roy Mustang line? No, that's a Sunny line. Yeah, that's oh, a Sunny line. I was gonna say because it's that that would have been awesome. Anyway, so 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 Z, at what point walking away into the jungle do you realize that you don't have a means to check this, and do you try to play it off? Um. Another new stream I, cat says hello. I, I, I think it's he walks into the tree line. Gosh darn it, you've summoned Tasha. Hello. Hello, hey. Tasha. Um I think it's he walks into the tree line, opens Crown's Well. No detect magic. No, right. Crown's Crown's Well opens to the detect magic page with a bookmark in it. Right. And he, like, turns around, comes walking back. So I have bad news. The jungle is magic-proof. I am unsure if the jungle is magic because I lost my means of detecting it because the You got turned into a ghoul. Sport. What? You got lost your means to detect it and Azaka broke in with because you got turned into a ghoul. No, because it was stolen. <laughs> I think Sarah just looks at the turtle, like looks at Z for a second before like slapping her palm against her face, like, you know, against the eyes. I use formulas. If someone steals my formula, I can no longer do the spell until I reconstitute the formula. So you can't look into the jungle? Well, no. Doctor, you can do magic. Can you look uh, into this? Give me one second. Can any of you? Sarah, there's just sighs for a second before walking up to the jungle's edge. Okay. Oh. Just to make sure, paladins don't have the ability to cast virtual spells, right? Uh, I don't know that. You, you'd be the one to know that, friend. You, you have more, uh, more access to the Paladin page than I do. To answer that question, no, the doctor does not. She says, no, I don't. If anyone else did, I have an ability that might be able to help. Uh, I just checked to make sure no Paladins cannot ritual cast. I can... I can quite easily look into the look around to see if I can find signs of magic, but that would take time and, well, my notes. <sighs> just, just let me do it. And then, like, walking up. I'm trying to think, did we say we were going to do it at the jungle's edge or actually a bit into the jungle? Trying to remember. Uh, you didn't say. Well, no, what Z was going, getting ready to do. Z just walked up to the jungle, held his hands out, and then there was a fart noise. <laughs> he did the Patrick Star walk up to door, open sesame, and nothing happened, and he went, Oh, yeah, I can't do that. Okay. And then Sarah is pretty much going to walk up next to uh, where Z was and then just cast Detect Magic. Just wordlessly walk up, let me fucking do it. Just does the incantation. Yeah, pretty okay. much. Uh, so you cast Detect Magic, um, and you notice there is a lot of magic in this area. Like, a lot. Like, the majority of the undergrowth has the illusions, like, and the illusion school on it, and a little bit further back, there's, like, some conjuration that's pinging. 
Oh, for the love of God. Oh, fuck. Uh, what do you see, good dame? We are probably not in a good place, even remotely. Most everything is under illusion, and there's conjuration magic further in. Heavens, how I wish I could see through your eyes. Can we There's a this? spell for that, just saying. If you cast that spell, could you pick piggyback off of someone's detect yes. magic? Yes, yes. Okay. All you have to do is cast share memory. I mean, I'm waiting to see, because I don't know if Z actually has that or not, so I'm waiting to see what Z's doing. Like, I definitely do not have that spell yet. Okay, well, you just started asking about it. I was like, are you casting it? Is Share Memory a thing? Yes. I can't find it. Oh, is it Unearthed Arcana? Uh, it's Guild Master's Guide Ravnica, I think. You said I couldn't have Ravnica spells. No, no. I said you can't have Ravnica Guild spells. Not gonna lie, if it's from a uh, Ravnica place, that, that sounds like it's a Demir spell to me personally, but. Uh, no. The, book, the, the, so Demir spell, the, Demir, the Demir guild spell is encode thoughts. Ah. I can't find it, so I can't be of help at what level to get that. Regardless, illusion magic. And a fuck ton of it. And some conjuration magic. And some conjuration magic. So a whole ton of no. A whole ton of oh fuck. Well, if we're looking, okay. if we're looking at, if we're attempting to find illusions, I think I, at this, like as soon as Sarah Death realizes an illusion, all she like grabs Z and kind of drags him back a bit away from the jungle wait, line. Wait, wait, this may be my realm of expertise. Ah. Yes, but we don't know what's out there, and clearly something wants to remain hidden. I am a researcher. I can find the inconsistency that make, that denotes it as an illusion. Probably. It might be very good illusions. I don't know. You're not exactly uh, okay. creating a great impression at the moment. Question two. Do any of you have a way to get rid of these illusions? I mean, I have a way, it's just not a good way. I usually stab whatever's causing it. The doctor, like, opens her mouth, closes her mouth, opens her mouth, thin twitch. I don't know. I legitimately thought that was a doctor reacting to Sarah this, this casual murder thing. The doctor has come to expect casual murder from half of the party. Casual like murder for when you can get out the fancy clothes. So what I'm hearing is we don't have detect magic or dispel magic. I have detect magic. I don't have dispel magic. My magic is very limited at best, I'm afraid. Sorry. Now, dear Sierra, dear, dear sorry, um, good dame. Is the magic on the trees themselves? Or is uh, this the surrounding area? Just to remember, it's only the undergrowth you said, right, Kit? Uh, no. It, the, there, is a, there is a wall, a crescent-shaped wall of illusion magic around the campsite. And then further into the jungle, there's conjuration magic. Ah, uh, yeah. That's, what, that's, that's right, that's right. Wait, around the campsite? Yeah, was... ar around the, the clear-cut bank, like, where you guys, like, where you walked, that whole line, there's illusion magic. And then further in, there's, yeah. That was all illusion? So... I, I no, no, that is, that's not what I said. There is a difference, there is a big difference between, quote, that was all illusion, and quote, there's a line of illusion magic through it. That is not the same thing. 
Um, to clarify also, because I'm still learning D&D &D with some of the stuff. Can I tell if it's like an illusion place or like, I guess it's kind of like, can I tell like the stuff you, I'm what, looking at what is just, illusioned? Or what does is detect it, like, magic say? The tech magic says you can tell if there's magic and what school it is. Okay, so it's like I can't kind of tell which way it goes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, here's the plan. Good dame. You know Nibbles. Nibbles like lands on his on his arm that he raises like a falcon trainer. Yes, I am aware of Nibbles. I shall direct Nibbles to head towards wherever the border of this magic is, and you shall indicate to me when to tell Nibbles to stop as he is about to reach the wall. Out of All turn. right, but I want us to group up in case if there is something on the other side of it that suddenly gets very angry. Right. Also, someone please hold me. I'm going to focus through Nibble's eyes, and that's going to make me very blind. I think... <laughs> because this is so perfect, I think Shago, like, walks over, and cheesing at, at the doctor the entire time, like, walks over and, like, puts his hands on your shoulders, and he says, Don't worry, good turtle. You're safe in the arms of the mighty Shago. Thank you. Con confusion? <laughs> that is such a Shago move. I'm sorry. It is? It is. So, yeah, he, he's going to direct Nibbles to start heading towards whatever the the border of where the illusion is. I okay. missed some of that. I don't know what happened. My Wi-Fi keeps going in and out. Uh, um, what happens is Z doesn't have any useful spells, and and uh, Siridath is afraid of illusion magic. I I went. Siridath does not know what the hell's on the other side. I went way too in on combat spells, and now I feel like a fucking idiot. No. I mean, that's the choice you make. I tend to favor utility spells over combat spells, so I will end up taking, like, one combat spell, and then I'll fight an enemy that's immune to that combat spell, and I'm useless. So, like, the other side of that has its drawbacks, too. Um. Like. Yeah. Hello, Kip. That's my headphones cord. Please don't touch it. Go ahead, Vader. If it's all a, you, It's a crescent around the camp, you said. Like, that's... Yeah. That's scary. That means... That's a lot of illusions. That's either, like, protecting the campsite from being seen, or there's something surrounding the campsite. So, uh, good dame. Yes. Has Nibbles reached said wall? So, 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 explain to me how this is working. Nibbles is going to fly up on the map until he hits the illusion? He's going to go until he until the point at which Nibbles would reach where this border wall is. And not then, not to put too fine a point on it, but why not just send Nibbles through it? You'll know when something changes. It's mostly so he doesn't have to be deaf and blind until Nibbles is about to pass through. Oh, I see. Like, okay, kind of... so I I understand what you're saying, friend. It's like ten feet. Okay, fair enough. He, he's straight up just going to fly Nibbles through. Like, Nibbles will Nibbles will reach the magic wall in an order of magnitude of less than a second. Question, is that around where um, Brick and I walked and we didn't go farther? Yeah, like, actually, like... yes. So, I, I, guess, I guess the plan instead would have been I shall tell Nibbles to go through the wall while looking through his eyes. Someone please hold me. This is going to make me very blind and Yeah, and then, and then Shago does the you're safe in the arms of the mighty Shago bit. And then <laughs> Nibbles flies through. And yeah, so you see dense, thick, dark, foreboding jungle coming closer and closer and closer. And then you pass through an arbitrary point and you're in substantially lighter jungle 
with like sunlight streaming down and like broken trees and like signs of conflict of, of the thunder lizards and like the game trails and all that but like yeah it literally you just went through like it made the jungle look thicker than it was yeah I that's think... one thing i was wondering was whether or not there, how is there not any trails from the thunder lizards also I, I... like what is like could like i was thinking like is the jungle really that dense next to a river uh yeah, so and like, it yeah. like turn around and look at where we should be in theory. I I think it's more so nipples just lands and Z just goes No. No no no. No 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 no. And he just starts walking. Okay. So you said you told Shago to hold your ass back. Um, are you, do, do you want to make an opposed athletic check to get Shago because he has a plus six? Um, no, I suppose it. it... So, yeah, so you start walking and Shago just, up, 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 my friend, you told me to keep you safe. I suppose I should have said stable. I appreciate it, but can, can I? I. How many fingers am I holding up? How many is he holding up? Are you are you looking through your own eyes? Yeah. He is literally holding up one finger under your nose. One. Well, I am hardly a medical expert, but I give you a clean bill of health. Off you go. Right. Is this gonna go go go? The doctor's gonna follow. Yeah. I, as I, a brick. Okay. As you as you approach the the line of the jungle, like every like, fi- like this is a good illusion like every fiber of your being is like that's thick jungle like it's not dangerous in and of itself it's like shit in it is dangerous but also like your your body is going this is gonna suck to walk through this sucks and like you realize you realize z uh actually make an arcana check i want to make sure you realize this uh one second the doctor has the rapier out she is not liking this yeah, okay. With with that, since you know that it's there, I will say, Z, you realize, like, oh, the illusion makes me not want to cross it. I see. That makes substantially more sense. I see. I, I think he's, like, immediately scribbling. Given the fact that this? your friends are still up tight, you might want to explain it. So, um, apologies. This... This illusionary wall, shall we call it, is not of the purpose to uh, hide. It is to deter. Not mm-hmm. in a, not in a malicious fashion, but in a precautious fashion. You approach the wall, and it makes you feel wrong inside. It makes you feel fear and anguish. And then you walk through and everything is hunky-dory okay. The doctor kind of, like, gives him this look and, like, kind of pokes, um, her- the rapier into the underbrush. The underbrush moves under the rapier. Gives Z a look of how. He calls Nibbles back, sends him back in, pulls him okay, back. Okay, so- so this is the creepy thing. You don't see Nibbles come out of the jungle. Literally, you call Nibbles back, Nibbles comes back out, and just basically steps out of a tree. I, I, oh. It's a fascinating formula. I'm going to have to replicate this if I can get the chance. Was this perhaps set up by the people or person whoever made this camp? I'm almost certain so, because if you look on just the other side, there's the trail of the Thunder Beasts. They, they, none of you can see what he is referring to. Neither can you, by the way, Z. The doctor's just got to suck it up and poke her head through. Yeah, Make a charisma it. saving throw. Illusion is charisma? Uh, willpower is charisma. Oh. 
so he, you're like, I'm gonna put my head through. And it's like watching somebody bluster up courage to jump into a lake and then wuss out. You're like, deep breath, you go to step and you just freeze and then back up again. He said, mm mm. The doctor's a bard, what the fuck? I know, right? I, I think Z is just gonna swoop on through. You also need to make a Christmas, save, friend? That's fair. Yeah, Made, that's nope, fair. Nope, 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 exact same reaction. Uh, You're like, no, no, like this, and you, you can't do it. Ooh, this is powerful magic. I think Sarah Death at this point is going to sigh and try to do it herself. All right, make a charisma save. This is an advanced formula. Okay, I you you can walk through, um, and you're, like, hacking it, like, underbrush so that you can fit through it. And, yeah, like, the underbrush is, like, moving past your sword, and then you step through, and you're still in jungle. To be clear, you're still in jungle. There is still undergrowth, there's still brambles, there's still jungle, but it's substantially lighter than it appeared. And you step out on the other side, and you look back over your shoulder, Cyrodeath, and there's no bank. It's just river. By the queen... Ooh, that's some strong magic. And okay, all right. Well, so to be fair, can, we... they, can they hear me? No. Okay, I was gonna say like we were able to enter the camp just fine, but we entered from the river. You and entered said from it was the river, crescent. correct? Yeah. Brick's gonna so try to I step through as well. Make a charisma save. What did it look like to everyone else? I just like stepped through the jungle and the darkness swallowed me or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, you you stepped through it. You stepped through a portrait basically, and then the portrait like came back around you and you were gone. Brick, you can ah. you can step through. I see Super Mario sixty four. Yes, actually. So yeah, Brick steps through, goes to where Sarah Death is. That's uncanny yeah so so you step through you see sarah death and then you turn back and there's no riverbank there's just river wow okay uh to clarify like when you said there's no river is it like turning back like directly down at our feet we see river Yes, like where the bank would be, because the bank is not that uh, thick, excuse me. There's just a small jungle drop-off into river. There's no cleared bank side. Okay. That's, God, trying to step through that way would be even scarier, jeez. Uh, hey, 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 Vader, think about what you just said and apply that in character. I, yeah, I get it. Gosh, I'd be even less keen to step through that way uh can i take a look around and see if i see the source of the conjuration magic because yes I... it's about 30 feet like further in along one of the thunder lizard trails you don't know which one it's impossible to tell okay right. i'm trying to think like it's just it's like it's like vaguely ovoid hovering about six feet off the ground can the we should invest we should investigate whatever that other source of magic you was. You cannot see shit. Can the, I, I, I know, but I'm talking I'm talking to Sarah Death because like I'm sure she explained that she saw like conjuration magic out there, but Brick's also not savvy with magic and he'd just like say like all the other hocus pocus bullshit. Fair enough. What were you gonna say, Doctor? Can the doctor try again or due to the terrible role, do you think the doctor is just too deterred? Um, you, anybody who failed the save to get through this, you need to change the variables to try again. Right. I must face this like a true mathematician. Do I need to, uh, make another save to go back through? Yes, and it's harder. <sighs> I must face this like a mathematician. Hey. Now, now that being said, you do have advantage on the save because you know what's there, but like you could tell that it's harder to go back this way. Okay. Um, 
Brick's yeah, going to boy. muster up the courage, and he's just going to, like, take, like, a running leap through the wall. Oh, then you don't need to make a save. But I think you do come out the other side all, like, tensed up, like you're about to hit a tree. Yeah. So, so you're like, I must face this like a mathematician, and Brick cannonballs onto the bank and, like, rolls in the mud. I was hoping Brick would cannonball into Z. It's oh, even I worse on the other side. All you can see is river. You fool, that was filthy. I didn't know if I could bring myself to walk through. You know what? That's fair. This is very powerful magic. Walk? Hmm? I think Seredeth is going to try again to just this time walk hmm. back through. Okay. Make make a Christmas save with advantage. Okay, yeah. You you managed to do it. You managed to, to push back through. But it's... It, like, literally, you step where you know the bank is, but where it's just a drop into the river, you feel gravity take your foot, you feel like you step into space, and it's not until your head is through the illusion that you realize you're standing on the ground. Like, you feel yourself fall into the river. Yeah, like, I feel like I'm falling constantly. Yeah. Uh, I... Ooh, it's like that feeling when you're laying in bed and all of a sudden... Correct. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, oh, I, I know I know how Z is going to counter this. Oh, that's that is some We need to investigate this. Agreed. We need to in we Dan, can you still see the source of the other magic bullshit? Yeah, nothing has broken your concentration so far. Sorry, what? Nothing has broken your concentration so far, so yes. All right. I can indeed. I also re remember that it's over one of the game trails. For the record, adventurers, allow me to say that this is my preferred way to do illusion magic, extremely subtly. I like, I like it. it. I'm using it. Yeah. <laughs> I also just realized it's extremely mindfucky. Illusion is my favorite school of magic, and in my opinion, many DMs don't do it justice, so... You're yeah. welcome. What? Okay. If you if you two can't muster up the courage to step through, one of you take my hand and I'll drag you through it. What time is it? I think it's like Sarah did like glares at Brick for before he said noon. He can't doctor. Courage. Do you think uh, we'll have enough time to uh, do both? Go in, find it, come back. It's about noonish, so we have daylight. But oh, well, I'm certain we have time. I might be gone before you get back. If that's, that's fine. If that's the case. Safe travels, oh. Stormfang. Well, at the very least, this illusion seems like it'll protect us from all but the riverbank in general. Do you uh, need very... my assistance? If not, I'm going to stay here and finish carving the beast. Oh, we should. I say we should be fine. We'll be careful. Yeah. All so, right. Here, here's here's my thought. Z Z's gonna send Nibbles back through. Okay. Then he's gonna look through Nibbles' eyes while Nibbles is staring like at the trails. And then he's going to try and walk through. Okay. That's a good idea. However, it specifically says any creature who approaches, so you send him to make a charisma save. Darn. I'll give you advantage on it because that's clever. Meanwhile, Brick just okay. offers the doctor his hand. Yeah. He'll take it. You manage, it, it's not easy. I will say that, Z. It's not easy, but you manage to, you manage to get through. And then, yeah, on the other side, it's less dense jungle. Still jungle. Still jungle. Do not let me, do not let me lead you astray and say, oh, it's easy going on the other side. It's still jungle, but it's substantially lighter jungle. And it makes more sense for a Thunder Lizard to come through here. Um, Brick and the Doctor, I need another Christmas save. Alright. Uh, well, does Sarah Death need another Christmas sh yep. save? Or no? If you're going through. <laughs> oh my god. I think she is kind of needed for at this point. <laughs> I'm gonna roll like a nat 1 or something all of a sudden. Oh my god. Do I still have advantage? Because I know about it. Um, no. You don't. Um, 
then I'm probably not getting But you either. have advantage because the doctor is helping you. However, uh, a 13 is not enough. Yeah. Ugh. So, Doctor, yeah. you can get through, but Brick lags behind and, and Cyrodeath lags behind. I think... Damn it. Bring Shago push me through. I think the doctor, like, kind of <laughs> gives gentle pain. Shago push me through. I think... <laughs> I mean, I think Shaga goes, all right, if you insist, and just, like, puts his foot between your shoulder blades and Sparta kicks you through the jungle. <laughs> Fucking rude. Can the doctor is she, like, is she out of sight by this no, point? No, you can't see anything. You walk through the illusion. I think you just see Brick, like, falling face first on the ground. Yeah, you see Brick, year. like, flailing and stumbling through, yeah. God, that's terrible. So, this is absolutely fascinating. Even though, at the time of my approach, I was both blind and deaf to my true body, I was still affected by the illusion's magic. It seems not dependent on visual contact, but proximity. Zeradeth still can't get through. Oh, Hello? Hi! Sorry, my mic disconnected there for a second. No, you're fine. You just didn't get through. Right. <laughs> like, as Sir just yells, Queen Stand magic. I can kick you as well if you like. Something tells me you'd enjoy that far more than I'm comfortable with. Almost certainly, yes. <laughs> Shago, you motherfucker. Shago is such a dick, it's great. He's like chaotic good, what do you want? He's a dick. Well, uh, you know who else is chaotic uh, good? Rainier never remember. Sorry, go ahead. So if it's... Wait, I just realized something. Where the hell's the chicken in all this? Oh, lord. Hockey... Is not the time for chicken antics. I am going to save that for later. Oh, thank you. This is not the time for Hey Where's Perry. I was hoping to just see like the chicken suddenly come out of the woodworks. This is not the time for Dude Where's My Car. This is not the time for Dooby Dooby Dooba Dooby Dooby Dooba. Okay, I think Serta is gonna make another try before she takes Shaco up on his offer. All right, make it. Well, you have to. You have to change. You can't. Like, you have to do something different. Just cannonball through. Yeah, I think that's what she's. Gonna, just. Uh, it's she, uphill. It doesn't work that way. You can. You can do that going down, not going up. Ah. Also, speaking of subtle, both of the guides unanimously decided that they are not touching that with a 10-foot pole. Let the crazy outlanders deal with the magic bullshit. I've got a thunder <laughs> lizard to carve up. Fuck yeah. that. You know? Uh, hmm. Let's see, I'm trying to... F I'm trying to find, because I can't remember if it's a site or... Ah, uh, okay. Uh... Can I use divine sense and then basically close my eyes nope. and home in? Well, I was about to say home in on Z, but okay. I would I would say this: you you can do that. You do not detect any undead in the proximity. Ooh, that's mean. Oh, holy shit! That's really strong. That's awful. We are either going to find something stupid or die. I'm excited. <laughs> this is totally up Z's alley. Uh, there's always just the, the option it... of letting Shago kick you through. Yeah, you could just let Shago. Yeah, I know. I just, sir, this is not going to be happy about it. I mean, if you can't get through the illusion, like. Well, and the other problem is, what ha do we do <laughs> once we're all on the other side? Suck it up, find it, go. Let's let it go. Uh. Can I reach my hand through the wall? With a charisma save, Wait. sure. 
Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try that. Make a charisma save. No. God damn. Holy shit, this wall sucks. Shago. Just. It's like, like you, like, in. I can almost imagine, like, Brick trying to reach his hand through the wall and, like, pulling back constantly, like he's trying to pet a growling dog. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly the motion. Yes. Yeah. So I think, I think Shago, like, gets up, stretches. Uh, so here is a question. I'm just asking this because I'm thinking of it. I think I weigh, like, something, like, over 200 pounds. Don't can worry. You? Shago has, like, a 23 in strength. It's fine. Okay. Um, just make it sure. Yeah, no, Shago is strong as fuck. So I think he like stretches, grins at you. Don't you tell the baby. doctor, hmm? And he like grabs you by both of your wrists and starts spinning you around like you're in a rom com. What is the name? And then just lets you go so you go sprawling through the wall. I think Serta like especially since I'm not very dexterous, like she comes spinning through and like kind of Face plants into the dirt. Oh, absolutely. Are you okay? I need to remember that the guides are helpful and not to kill them. Uh, I, uh, what? You speak of it to anyone. I will make sure that you regret it for the rest of your days. Head tilt, confused fish. At that, I think Sarah just picks herself up, like, dusting her armor off. Okay. Now you're all in the light, you know, monster trample jungle. Welcome. I think, oh I, I, I honestly think Z is just going crazy, taking notes, looking back at the quote-unquote river. Well, no, there's no quote-unquote. The river is there. It is decidedly there. It's a real river. You know what I mean. Hi. I am certainly going to have to try and learn whatever spell this is. It agreed, as long as we can find the source of it, that shouldn't be too hard, should it? Oh, certainly not. You know, assuming whatever the master of this spell is, is, you know, forthcoming with the information and willing, and, and is capable of being forthcoming with said information. All right, fair dame. Which way to the bullshit? Cocks a thumb behind her. I'm letting Siridith take point on this. Well, she's the only one who could see, so... Yeah. I think, like... Like, grabbing Z and shaking my shoulder. Turtle, I believe that is more of our current concern. You see I mean, some yeah. dappled sunlight in a jungle. Well, you said it was over game trail, right? Oh, because Shago broke my concentration, didn't he? No. Like, the game, like, there's a bunch of game trails in this area because two dinosaurs came through. Right. But if you point to the, the ovoid conjuration magic thing, if you point to it, no one can see it. Lead on. Like, is it actually like a path or is it just kind of like all together in one spot? It's, um, it's like, it's like trampled underbrush. Like, yeah, there's still yeah, the, jungle the, the, there. Yeah, the magic is not on the trail. There's like an oval of magic floating about six feet off the ground in this spot that happens to be on the game trail. Okay. It's like 30 feet away. I think Zeredith, like, walks up to where the spot is. Here is where this conjuration magic is. I don't know what it does, though. Well, that should be no trouble, as long as I can get a proper look at it. I should be able to come up with something. We know at least it isn't too far away now. 
considering how much trouble we've had with that wall, it might as well be over half a mile away. Can the doctor take a look around now for any, like, signs of, um, humanoid life? Like... Sure, make a survival check. Alright, one moment. Bop. Um... Not with that roll. I don't think you see anything. Damn it. Let's focus on the magic for now. Sirideth is standing right, right next to it, kind of like how, not touching it, but like pulling out an arm, like pointing at it. All right. I, I can't share my sight with you, so I don't know what else I can do except say it's right here. If we destroy it, then Z might not be able to take note of it, but if we don't handle it, I don't know what to do. Wait, is it just in the middle of the air in front of us? Well, in front of Cyrodeath, but yeah. Uh, good dame, would you be so kind to guide my hands? Yeah, it, Hockey said she's pointing at it. Like, I'm probably like about, at most, like, six inches away from it and I'm like pointing directly at it like she's like doing the, the pose of a presenter on the price is right yeah right <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. I, I see okay Z probably what's like the, what's the what's the emote in Final Fantasy called Vader with the freaking uh, aircraft and control batons oh the uh, the uh, songbird cheer emotes yes I, I have just like waving glowing sticks like here it is I, I love the thought that Z is just like, he's got Crownswell open in one hand, and he just raises his arm out slightly, releases Crownswell to just start floating. Okay. And he's got one hand ready to do shield, and then he starts reaching for what they're pointing at. Make a constitution saving throw. Certainly this turtle went off in the jungle and we never saw him again. Okay. Uh, you are poisoned. Oh. And make a charisma saving throw. Holy shit! Which you now have disadvantage on because you're poisoned. So you failed. What? Yelp. The fuck? Uh, so you failed, and this is, like, the other one was a generalized sense of anxiety. This one, like, you see that your visual, like, information that you're getting is just, there's a jungle in front of me. I'm gonna just walk through this tiny patch of jungle to literally your soul. You're like, there's a dragon. There's a black dragon right there. Its mouth is open. It's gonna breathe acid on me. It's right there. That is a dragon. I'm gonna walk into its mouth. I can't do this. So in one moment, he's like one hand ready to shield. The other, he's like touch, touch thing. And in that split second, he turtles. Uh, 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 Z, are you okay? No. This um, is... Uh, I'd like turtle. to leave now. What happened? I'd like to leave now. Give yourself inspiration, Z. <laughs> I think of that the sir, that just like glances back at the doctor before just like trying to grab the turtle and move him the doctor's a trauma doctor so would this be one of those situations uh yes it absolutely would um shell shock literally shell shock I think the doctor like uh, would it be a bad thing for her to touch him then like for Sirideth to touch him uh for Sirideth to touch him almost certainly don't touch him. Yeah. Shell shock. That's terrible for touching someone who's shell shocked is a terrible thing to do. Well, I'm wondering if it has to do with the spot, since it seems to be a much more extreme version of what afflicted us with the illusion. 
I'm almost certain it is. Z, can you roll a D8 for me, please? Hi. Uh... I'm trying out a different command because I just now noticed it today. Hey, it did work. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, lucky seven, you can you can act normally minus the things that are already affecting you. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. The doctor is going into like trauma doctor mode. What do? Sid does a... not know what to do. The doctor does. Uh, make an arcana check. All right. It's a dragon. Uh, Doctor. Make, okay, so make a medicine check with disadvantage. He's been in source hold. Uh, he's been in source hold. He's affected by something. He's got a fever. He's sweating. I mean, if I don't know if total sweat, but he's got a fever. He's he's being affected by something biologically, and his like brain and body have basically shut down. I think the doctor is going to go, oh no. Very calmly, very matter-of-factly. Z, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on you. I'm going to have to touch you for this. Will you be okay with that? You're not hurt, Z. You're just, it's bad. I'm not, I'm not injured. I'm just in the presence of a fucking dragon, good madam. There's no dragon that we can see. And like, like you can't see one either, Z. But your body is telling you that, like that, that, like, Gam. Does Gamzy know uh. what the phrase "dragon fear" means? Ye, yeah, roughly. That is what you're experiencing. It is. Uh. It. It is. It. It is right there. It. I. The nose. The. the uh. Not, uh, saw all this at this point breaks fed up he pulls the warhammer off his back and smashes where Cyrodeth is pointing make a constitution saving throw well, where Cyrodeth was pointing because when the turtle suddenly did that I think she pulled her hand away like what the fuck yeah right uh cool so you're poisoned make a charisma save with disadvantage oh boy Oof. Uh, so, so for you, Brick, um, it's not like dragon. For you, it's it's something worse. It is the scariest thing that can happen to a dwarf. For just a split second, your your eyes do not betray you. Your eyes are still firmly centered in the the jungle amongst your friends. However. The, your entire consciousness, your underground in a mine shaft, the mine shaft starts shaking, vents open in the floor, and sulfuric gas like pops out. And you're frozen to your core. Bricks probably drops his warhammer and puts his hands to his mouth, backs off like shaking to his knees. Uh, Brick? Okay, lesson learned. Stop touching the fucking spot! Like, Brick, okay. you, can, you can hear the, like, cave-in alarms ringing in your head. You can't hear them physically, but you hear them, like, ringing in your head, and, like, like if, if you were not, you know, fucked up, you'd be like, I'm being fucked with right now, but, like, it's real to you. He's probably, like, hyperventilating. Oh, almost certainly. So is Z. Yeah. What does the doctor know about what it takes to bring someone out of this? Uh, it's got to run its course. They just got to, like, calm down, like, uh, get it out of their system. I think the doctor sighs and shakes her head, looking at Zerdeth. When it comes to this kind of stuff, it just has to run its course, I'm afraid. I don't know how long that could take, though. The problem is this is magic, obviously. They could be like this for months. It's even worse, it's magic, so I can't even guarantee that's a fact. 
The main problem we have is if any of us interact with the spot, even if we were to destroy it, the thought going to guarantee that it removes the spell. And exactly. Last thing we need, Doctor, is for you or I to fall under it as well. Mm-hmm. So, I say we leave it alone for now until we think of something better. So if you guys just want to, like, sit and keep things calm, about a minute later, both of you are going to come out of it. I think that's what they... Sir Death would, like, be agreeing and, like, waiting for a few minutes, at least. The doctor's, like, going through her mental notes, like, is there absolutely anything I can do to make this easier? Because people are suffering and she doesn't like, know how to Like, pretty help, much, like, right when now. they come out of it, they're probably going to need water. So Brick especially. Yeah, the doc's gonna pull her water skin off of her. Yeah, so yeah, oh. so a, a, about a minute later, the two of you start to, to come out of it. And, like, at no point is it, like, I, 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 yes, it is, I got ensorcelled by the thingus, but it's also just, like, an aversion to this area. Huh. The doctor, I, like, quietly offers her water skin to Brick. He takes it. No. Takes a drink. Calms down. What? Why is this here? Uh, Kit, to clarify, by the way, uh, when you say this area, does that include the camp? Or the campish area? It means this area. So the whole area. There, overall? there are there are strong negative memories associated with the spot you're standing in. The doctor walks over and hands um up Z her water skin as well. Hey. Thank you. Like she wipes it with her um coat sleeve and just offers it to him. What on earth did you two see? Or what I'm favoring on, sorry. <laughs> I didn't, didn't see anything, but it felt as though I was in the presence of a dragon. A beast of un unmeasured power and might. Magical I mean, knowledge and power that not even gods could compare to. For me, it was a cave in. Sulfuric gas pouring in. It felt like I couldn't breathe. So, exactly the same sensation for both of you. I think this Sarah that, like, after hearing that, looks up to the spot. It's like, no, no, I, I'm not messing with that spot. And just Z make an arcana me. check. Sorry, what? I said Z make an arcana check. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So, from what Brick described, whatever spell this is, it gave you the emotions, and then your brain filled it in from there. Frankly, whatever this is, it's... Shall we say... forcefully adaptive? It injects the sensation and the mind builds around it. Horrifying but fascinating. Agreed. Effective. But here's the question. Why is it Why? in one spot specifically? On the off chance, has the doctor ever heard of something like this? Make an arcana check. Your best guess? Some kind of ward, but it's an order of magnitude stronger than what you're used to. This is some kind of ward, but I've never seen anything to this caliber. What's in ward in, though? What's in this spot? Are there any 
way to get rid of it? I think the doctor is going to go stand... Because you said it's six feet above in the air, right? Uh, no, it's not six feet above you. It's six feet off the ground. Okay, the doctor It's is... also relatively big, so it's like base it it is basically person sized. Got it. Cause my thought process was the doctor was going to go below it and start picking at the ground with the rapier. You could you could do that because the problem is you can't see it. You might risk touching it. Lady good but Lady Sarah Death, could you guide me for a second make sure I don't touch it with this rapier I want to check something I can try it doctor okay yeah, with Sarah Death helping the doctor's gonna poke around for a second I'm just gonna like poke it like Brick's Warhammer is down there the thing is I don't know if the Warhammer is touching the thing still is it no, Sir Death, it's not. No, it is not, Doctor. Then I think she's actually going to take the Warhammer and kind of trudge up dirt around it to see if there's anything else. Nothing happens. You find some clay. Right. Well, here's a thought, hmm? Everyone back up, please. The doctor's gonna do so. She's gonna give Brick his warhammer back. Yeah. Sir Death is going to back off as well. And Brick, I'm assuming bit. you already backed off because of your whole episode. Yeah. Okay, so, Z. Experiment one. He, he does like a quick scribble in his book and has Nibbles try to like land on whatever it was. Uh, so, like, go above it and then land on the top of it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so Nibbles, like, circles the spot. Can't see it. He's, he's giving his best guess, because Nibbles is tied to you, and you know where you got affected. So, circles the spot, comes, like, swooping down, claws outstretched, disappears. Not, like... Poof disappears, yeah? Vanished. I... Uh, uh... Excuse me for a moment, I won't be able to hear you. And he, like, start, tries to see through nibbles. Does that work extra-dimensionally? What? Oh, uh, shit. Uh, we're gonna find the chicken on the other side of that, aren't we? As an action, you can... Able to see through your familiar's eyes and hear what it hears until the start of next turn, getting benefits of face punish so senses your familiar has, your deaf and blind regains your seeing. I need to know if that works extra dimensionally. I don't know. This is a lot, holy shit. It is a lot. Uh while the familiar is within a hundred feet of you, you can communicate with it telepathically. Additionally, as an action, you can see through the familiar's eyes and hear what it hears until the start of your next turn. Getting the benefits of any special abilities says during this time you are definitely as an action. You can really dismiss the familiar. Dismiss into a pocket mission without which your summons. Alternatively, you can dismiss it forever as an action. While it is temporarily dismissed, you can use it to reappear in any occupied space within thirty feet of you. You can't have more than one familiar at a time, so it doesn't say. Um, it is technically within a hundred feet of you. However, it is also on a different dimension. Um, so the, so, so the connection... maybe say like it's foggy. I feel like I feel like it is reasonable to say that spells like this require you to be on the same plane. Even if the portal is right there in front of you, I still yeah I think I think it it requires you to be on the same plane. So like if Nipples got drawn into the ethereal plane. Despite being within 100 feet of you, you wouldn't be able to do anything with it. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I think you try to do it, nothing happened. Like, you can tell that Nibbles is not dead, but you can't, like, do the vision thing. Apparently, the lead designer of 5th edition said that he does consider people, if they're on two different, like, planes or dimensions, they are infinitely far away, so they are not within 
It's like it's not even remotely 100 feet. That, that's what I thought. Okay, so yeah, the, doesn't work. I, I. I think it's like I tries it again. Nothing. Whoa. Tries again. Nothing. I dare say this makes no sense. What is it? He's gone. Like, got poof? Like, he has happened in the past? I, I, I have a certain level of insight as to when that occurs, but in this instance, they are simply gone. I cannot make any form of contact, but I am aware they are still present. This it, I, it's not like a stretch for Z to be able to figure out what this is, right? Like, uh, make an intelligence saving throw. There's a, there's a mechanism for this, and it's the fairest way we know how to play this game. So making it safe. Can the doctor give Bardic inspiration for this? Yes, you can. I'll use it because yep. I don't trust that number. Uh, go ahead and go ahead and and take uh, guidance from from the bishop as well. Uh, Serdeth also can do guidance. Can someone have double guidance? No. Oh shit, that was a d10. I do not believe that her bardic inspiration has a d10. It's a d6. Okay, so you got 24 on that check. Uh, and that is enough that, yeah, I think it is completely reasonable. What, mm, okay, I want to specify. You do not know immediately what this is. However, the sentence... Mm, this is likely a portal is completely reasonable I believe this may be some form of portal a means of interdimensional travel the doctors <laughs> like fins drop her jaw go slack uh -huh. Miss Sira Death is your vision still magically active I think it should be at this point. I'm, not, I'm trying to think. Would this be considered really 10 minutes at this point? Uh, it has not been 10 minutes, no. Also, Nibbles poops. Yes. My magic vision is still active. Good. How far around us does that barrier you mentioned go? Does it encapsulate, uh, does it encapsulate this entire area before us? To clarify, you're asking as, like, the conjuration magic barrier thing? No. Uh, the illusion. It is behind you in a reverse crescent shape only. Yeah. So just the, around the camp. Yeah. So it is a shield from behind alone. Yes, I believe. Judging by its general shape and how it's set up, it almost seems like it was made to protect the camp itself. Want to keep someone in it. Nibbles has poofed. I know nothing about this interdimensional wibbly wobbly bullshit you're speaking of, but I think it's safe to say we don't try and touch it again. Completely agreed. Agreed. New experiment. The main concern we have is whoever or whatever is on the other side clearly does not want people to know about it. Is that going to be a problem for hey, us Gamzee. later on? Hmm? I'll give you 100 XP if you throw crowns well through it. No. Crowns well will kick your Smart ass. boy! Smart boy! <laughs> Wait a minute. Nah, that's not worth it. I feel like when you get an offer like that from the DM, your immediate answer should just always generally be, nope. That's not enough XP. You're right. What was experiment two, dear? Um, experiment two. Z is going to try and get like his finger as close to the point as he can without touching it within the bounds of holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. You don't know where it is, so this is going to be hilarious. Um, 
Make another rent save. Okay. Um. Okay. You 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 get. You get where you presume it is not, and touch that area. Right. A good dame. Yes? Pop quiz for you. What is believed to be the most magically unstable element a caster can weaponize? I think Sarah just kind of gets a bit of a blank stare. <laughs> like, I guess fire? I, no, actually. Fire magic was one of the very first that was tamed. Ah. I'll have you know, it's quite simple, really. Fire and, magic? Hang on, I gotta figure out how to fucking spell this. What Good is enough. it? He's gonna cast the Frost Fingers, but psychic damage. Okay. Uh, you need a target, friend. He's targeting the Thingus. Are you casting Magic Missile with the Darkness? Effectively? I cast Magic Missile at the Darkness! Oh, no. <laughs> Um, you need a target, friend. He can't target the... Wait, oh, You can't it. target it because you can't fucking see anything. Yeah, no, I just realized I'm making this a lot harder on myself. So, uh, get finger in position. Get the, the bishop. Could you fairy fire around here, please? Uh, sure. The area feel, fills with a uh, slightly brighter golden sunlight. Does the thing highlight? Because that. It does not. Can... Fascinating. Fascinating. I wonder if a ranged weapon would have the same effect. I can only imagine it would have about the same amount of effect as. The dinosaur. All right. That experiment number three. And assuming his hand is in the right position, plunge forward. Make a constitution saving throw. The doctor is going to need to do a lot of healing. Oh, You're poisoned no. again. Make a charisma save. With disadvantage. What point are we gonna have Z just Hey, 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 over? hey, Z. Do you remember when the Tyrannosaurus Rex fell in the river with you in its mouth and you were drowning and being crushed by a Tyrannosaurus' jaws? <laughs> mm -hmm. You're back there. Ah, uh, just plunge forward, turtle. The doctor sighs. <sighs> Let's stop touching it. Out of character, I kind of want to have Sarah to touch it, but I'm worried about the results. Touch it! Touch it! Touch it! Touch it! Touch it! The doctor knows better than to try this, but Sibs is almost tempted to throw a star at it to see if that happened. Has anything happened? But A, don't know if that'll fuck up the doctor. B, don't know if it goes through if I'll get the star back because extra dimensional shit. Throw it. C, you don't know who's on the other side. They might be very pissed about getting hit in the face with a star. The doctor is like actively looking at the stars on her belt, looking at, up at the area, looking at Z, looking at Brick. Repeat that cycle for a couple seconds. That's if not a bad idea. It, if you throw it, it is not coming back. Or you're gonna make something very angry. I think instead of one of the stars, then 
the doctor goes into her bag and starts looking for something. Okay. Third. She pulls out a bar of soap. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here goes nothing. And throws it as hard you as throw she can. Throw that in there. there. Okay, so you throw it. Make a ranged attack with disadvantage because you can't see your target. All right, how do I do that? Um. Uh, fuck. Are you? I don't have. Are you proficient in dexterity saving throws? Uh, no. Wait, yes, I am. Okay. Barred. Then just make just make a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage. It'll be the same roll. Okay. Okay. Uh, so with that roll, I think you throw it. And, like, I'm assuming you're basically just, like, throwing it where Z was, roughly. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so it, like, you throw it, and it just disappears from sight. And nothing happens for a couple of seconds. And then right as Z is coming down from his shell shock, um, what's your armor class? Mine? No, the doctor's. Oh, no. Uh, 12. Our soap going out at, at box speed. Uh, yeah. So, uh, something just appears from the dappled light of the fairy fire and beams you in the face. Uh, you take four points of bludgeoning damage and you're going to be spitting out soap flakes for a little bit. Gagging fish. <laughs> like, and and to be clear, this takes you off your feet. Like, like holy shit. Yeah, it's like you're an anime character that just got into a snowball fight. Like, takes you off your feet. Like, is the bar of soap still intact, or is that bitch gone? Um, it's it definitely crumbled from the impact. You've got a big welt on your face now. Doctor gagging okay. and choking. Don't throw things into it. The fuck is this thing? Does drinking water helpers that make it worse? <laughs> it probably makes it a little bit worse, yeah. Um, question, do you guys want to go a little bit long so you have some more time with this puzzle? Yeah. Yeah, I just, ugh. I have. I, I want to touch it, but I don't think that's a good idea. Touch it, one. touch it. I have one more idea. Can't you just shoot some magic at it? Is, is Z, is Z okay? Yeah. Uh, you're, 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 you're coming down. Like, to, to be clear, like, you're coming down from it, and it's like, okay, the, the, the spell is wearing off. But at no point is it okay. It's just like, oh, I was just in a car accident. I'm safe now, but I was just in a car accident. It's like that. <sighs> okay. <sighs> You come out to see the doctor choking on soap. Yes. Are you all right, good doctor? No, she's got a huge, like, a bruise on her cheek. Right. Don't throw things. Don't throw things at it. Experiment. Spitting out studs. Exper. There's... Come on. There must be something on the other side of it. Experiment number four. Throw it that hard back. <laughs> Hello? Whatever it is, it's rude. No response. I, stupid thought. He tries it in Aquan. No response. Hmm. The doctor, out of morbid curiosity, in Sylvan. Hello? Make an animal handling check. Oh my god. God damn it. Hawk! See, this is bullshit. Okay, so you say like "hello" in Sylvan, and like a little bird just like flies out of a tree and like lands in front of you, and then you like cough and it flies away again. This is bullshit. 
Hi. I have an idea. I just had my worst idea. What? The three of you pick up the doctor and throw her through the portal. No. I have a better thought, but it's also just as bad. Yeah, go on. I think Z turns around and says, Right, this requires some forceful expedition. Translation. You can't expect any of us to want to throw someone through there. But I'm almost certain the good dame has no th th troubles throwing me through. If I go through and don't come back, that's one less undead, hmm? I think Sarah Death is like doing the... Like the finger up and it's just like... You know, you're not wrong. <laughs> you know, like that face. Dr. Glare. Right, so who has rope? The doctor has silk rope, but I don't know if that'll help. Would the doctor actually have it on her? It's in her bag. Yep. It's on her bag. Oh, all right. Then, right. yeah, I think she, like, raises her hand. Yep. Right. Then I will, as they say, turtle up. Then I will need the rope tied around my midsection. Then good dame Cyrodeth can attempt to force me through the hole. The doctor is going to bardic inspiration Z again, because this is a terrible fucking idea. It sounds like you should bardic inspiration Cyrodeth. Fair. Then, yeah, no, bardic inspiration for Cyrodeth. I mean, Cyrodeth would be willing to do it, because the turtle raised a good point. Either we figure out what this is, or we get rid of one headache for her. Right. The doctor is, like, going to watch her tie, like, whoever ties the knot, tie the knot. I imagine right. the doctor would probably do it herself just because she wanted to make sure the knot was okay. Fair I mean, enough. Brick's probably done his fair share of rope work. Tying knots is a sleight of hand check, right? Uh, it is a dexterity check, actually. Just like straight dexterity. All right. Uh, my dex is a 13 with a one modifier, so... I've got a three, so... No, oh, I shouldn't tie the knot. I got a zero. Then yeah, from the sound of it, I'll go ahead and better to do it. Then I'll go ahead and make the dex check. All right. All right, you you tie up that turtle real good. I hope you know what you're doing. Oh, certainly not. <laughs> that is the correct <laughs> response. Something tells me if we knew, we wouldn't be anywhere near this thing. But that's the fun of my job, you see. Please it is my... It is my responsibility as an order of scribes... scribe... To I imagine out. why you're talking about that series, they just picks him up. Uh, can you lift him? He's like 700 pounds. I think you need to oh. shove him. Oh, was he 700 pounds? He's a lot. Okay. I'm, I I'm like 500. Okay, then probably no. What's what's your strength? Because it's uh, times 16. 15. So that would be 160 plus 80, which would be 240, so no. Yeah, I'm not even close. But you can if you, you get, can budge him. If you get brick to help, maybe. True. One of you make an athletic check with disadvantage. Oh, Please. sorry. With advantage. I'm used to saying disadvantage in the scene. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, I have a... I've got a six for all players. Okay, then you do it. I've got a six. Okay, so that will be enough to shove the turtle forward once he goes turtle mode and freaks out. Uh, however, uh, I'm going to need you to make a dexterity saving throw, Brick. Okay. Oh my god, is he gonna come shooting out of the portal? Cool. So what happens is you shove oh no. him through the portal and you feel like something take him and you can't let go quick enough and you're pulled through as well. Oh, oh no. The doctor screams. 
Well, at least I have backup. Oh, shit. Uh, so, to the two of you, I say, um, do you know what the phrase spaghettification means? Oh, oh no. Oh, it's... Oh, no. It's that, it's that movie oh. with... It's that there movie with space Jumanji. Uh, um, it is. It is the 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 sense of being dismembered atom by atom through a black hole. Um, you both experience that from your perspective. Oh, Dear God. And then you black out. I'm sorry. I cannot help this thought. Dear God, what's going on over there? Black hole. Black hole. Pretty much. This, this time of year. <laughs> in this area of Cholt. Localized yeah. entirely in, in this your portal, jungle. yes. Uh, you both take uh, 11 points of force damage. Oofle. Shit. <laughs> One, two, three, four. So, the doctor and the dame, which is the title of this next episode, Ten, eight, what are you two nine, doing? 10, 11. The doctor is going to start trying to pull them both out, like. Well, hold on, hold on. Did the rope actually get sucked in all the way with them? Uh, who had the back of the rope? I don't I think, think either of us. Then I yes, it got it thing. got pulled through. Uh, the doctor is freaking the fuck out. Sarah Death was helping me push him in, so. Oh, it's possible I had the rope. Oh, that's right. Sir so Sarah Death also gets pulled through and also takes eleven points of force damage. Oh, my I don't God. even get a dex chance. I guess no, that's that's fair. You get a deck save. You get a deck save. It's awful of me to say, but this is fucking awesome. Okay, so you can let go quick enough if you want to. Oh, I am wondering if I should or not. Shit. You don't want to join me and Brick on this amazing adventure into the multiverse? Yeah, but also the dame and the doctor makes a hell of an episode title. Go through the portal. All right, I think Sarah you should, gets you should you should not leave the doctor alone. You should not leave the doctor alone. Reach back and grab the doctor and drag her through the portal. Okay, we just all get eaten through. <laughs> so do I make an athletics if I'm inevitably going to fail? Sure, acrobatics, but sure. Acrobatics. Oh, no, wait, 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 okay, okay, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait. Is the athletic tech to try to pull everyone out of the portal before you get sucked in? It's more to try and stop herself. Uh, okay. I mean, you could choose not to get grabbed by the dame, but not with that roll. You can't. Yeah, no, I figured that would be as bad as it was. Okay, even if I so rolled all of you experience spaghettification. Uh, like a fucking cutscene from Control, you see yourselves in various torturous positions, and then you black up, black out, you take 11 points of force damage, and then you wake up, all of you, under warm summer sun, on a wooden deck, connected to several other wooden decks, connected to several outdoor pavilions, on a white sand beach, and if I could get away with it, the Costa del Sol music would start playing. Oh my. Why do I have a feeling the doctor wakes up and immediately just pukes up suds? Uh, you do not, actually. You feel fine. Did we just get Pop Tropica? A little bit. Y'all, I'm gonna have a fucking stroke. We just got goddamn pop tropical. <laughs> the doctor like screams like a little bit like that little short shriek of what the fuck? I I think there's this brave moment of Z rocking to his feet, looking around, doing the same, but then it's followed by What killed Nibbles? <laughs> Uh, you, you, say, you say what killed Nibbles, and you look, the other side of the beach, rapidly, not so rapidly as to be unaccommodating, but rapidly raises into hills, which turns into rocky cliffs about 300, 400 feet away. Towering above those cliffs is a gigantic floating, like, obelisk, and it has a big crystal eye about... 2,000 feet above your head. 
Hi, Sauron. Yeah, basically. I think I think he screams, "What killed Nibbles?" And he looks at that, and then he just starts going, <laughs> while very slowly turtling. Yeah, right. The doctor is going to go check on Brick and Sarah Death. They're 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 waking up. I don't think we're in Chult anymore. All right. We are in hell. No, this is most certainly not Avernus. He pops his head out. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure. A tabaxi in a swimsuit and a shield guardian start walking up the, the like, plank deck towards you. A Should tabaxi? We... Yeah. Should we be concerned? I think Sarah does this kind of, like, trying a bit on the beach. <laughs> Not unless they draw their own weapons. Shield guardian. The shield tabaxi guardian. doesn't seem to be armed. A shield. Hold on. That's a, he's like unshelling. That's a shield guardian. That is very advanced. A what? Wait, would the doctor know what a shield guardian is? I mean, there's one walking towards you. It looks like a Gundam. Uh, what? A, a shield guardian is a, is, is a uh, magically operated and created automaton. The tabaxi like walks up to you and beams. Welcome to Sunshore! And that's the last epi the last shot of the episode. Jesus Christ. We are... I'm trying to think. It's like... Well, let's describe. It's like those places to where it's like, we're so happy here, you should stay forever and ever. Lotus so, uh, Motel from let's, the Premier let's, Act series. Anyway. <laughs> let's do some shout-outs, shall we? Why did you have to be so goddamn curious? It's gonna be a great adventure. How fucking dare you? We're going to have a fucking beach episode in the middle of our end of the world jungle trek. Hell yes, you are. <laughs> we still don't know where the fucking chicken is. That sounds like a later us problem. So let's do some shout out, shall we? Way, that is an always us problem. Hey, Aki, why don't you give us a shout out? Hello, hello, everyone. I am the Intangible Hawk. I am here on Kit's server and also here on Twitch at the same name. I do some programming, some art, <coughs> and some ga gameplay and everything. If you need me, you can find me, like I said, on Kit's server, and hopefully soon I will be streaming myself. Cheers to that, friendo. Guy Gamzy, give us a shout out. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, I'm Guy Gamzee, the Bard in Training, getting a little more experience with every single show. I do so hope you've enjoyed this one. It was everything I hoped it would be. Um, and I do so hope you'll join us for the next one. And until then, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your night. Vader, give us a shout out. Hello everyone, I am Journeyman Vader. I am a mod on Kit's Discord and I stream on Twitch. You can find me over on Kit's Discord or on Twitch at twitch.tv slash journeymanvader or on Twitter at Vader Sidious. Sibs, finish us out, please. Hi there, my name is Sibs143. I am one of Kit's in this order. Artist, stagehand, moderator, but to everyone else, I am the Technicolor Disaster. If you ever need me for anything, I can be found lurking in Twitch streams or in Kit's Discord server. Or if you'd like to talk more privately, feel free to shoot me a DM and we can talk there. For my part, as ever, I am the sharp-eyed Kitsune, the teller of tales and the weaver of mysteries, the masked bard. Excuse me. This is the channel that is always devoted to lore and storytelling, world-building, role-playing, and discussions of those things. So if that's to your fancy, you're an excellent company here, and I do hope that you enjoyed your time with us. I stream every single day that my health permits me to do so, and we're rolling with advantage in 2021 and beyond, which is two chances to catch a given stream. You just watched Decisive Action Crown of Fangs, our weekly 
D&D 5th edition module playthrough of Tomb of Annihilation that, as you can see, I'm putting my own spin on, as I am often want to do. We do a lot of tabletop content on this channel, next up being this Thursday with Voices of the Mountain, a combination Rime of the Frost Maiden and Storm King's Thunder uh, module playthrough that I am equally having uh, a devil of a time with. Stop by if you like tabletop role-playing games, or if you don't know if you like tabletop role-playing games, we'd love to have you. Providing the weather clears up and my health holds out, I'll be back tomorrow afternoon with more of Yakuza 3 as we work our way through that story, and I would absolutely love to have you. As always, though, I need to get out of here, but when I do, I'll be hosting someone, someone who I like, someone who I hope that you all will like, and can spread some of the love that was felt here today over on their channel. And check back here, because I'm always hosting someone, and you might find a new favorite streamer that way. For now, as ever, time to close the book on today and leave you with these parting words. From myself and my keepers to all of you, the regulars, the followers, the newcomers, and the lurkers, whether you're just having a seat by the fire or you've got a running tab at the bar, remember, there's always more stories to tell. And hopefully, I'll see you all next time for another evening in the Crown of Fangs and a new chapter. Good night, you guys. Thank you so much for stopping by and hope to see you again soon.